This is the Levels Network. I'm Justin Hordor, joined by the Triple OG, William and Mason. Mace, this is round six review time, but before we start the show, mate, uh, a really sad weekend for, uh, for a lot of people that were mm. involved uh, uh, at what happened at Bondi Junction. Uh, very close to home for us. Uh, we is, live yeah. just around the cor- corner. Um, yeah, it was it was a difficult conversation to have sort of the next day with with my partner because we were looking at going to Bondi Junction yeah. around that time. So, I um, just want to start off and say uh, thoughts and uh, uh, with the the victims and everyone and the families, the families everyone. everyone's involved. Terrible, terrible day. Yep. I mean, I'm up in Bondi Junction, or friends or family <clears throat> are up there two or three times a week. Mm. Very unfortunate. That's a, uh, terrible, what about for the terrible. rest of the weekend, mate? Let's get into the footy. I know it's a very, it's a very yeah. uh, tough. Sorry to start with that, but it's just yeah, we have to th- have to think about the victims. Definitely have and to the families. Them. Yeah, them and the families. Uh, what about the rest of the weekend, mate? Uh, happy birthday too. It's, <laughs> it's a sad way to to yeah, move thanks, into mate. to um to a birthday shout out. But mm. uh, what was the weekend like with the family? Um, and we obviously had the Aqua Rugby yeah. on Saturday as well, which was a great day, a uh, great event. What a uh, great day. Shout out to uh, to BSC, everyone involved at Aqua Rugby for putting on a great event. Yeah. Um, you had a run on, didn't you? I had, I had a, yeah. I had a couple of carries. It? it was fun. Yeah. It was really fun. It was like, you know, when you get there, like no matter what, especially when contact's involved, like if you go and throw a footy around and play touch, I was tag, it's yeah. sweet. But like when you know you can get hit by it, people you don't know, yeah. Uh, you start to worry a little bit, but uh, it was it was fun. It's um, I can see I've watched it now for a while from, from mm. seen it on socials over the last couple of years, but it was fun to be a part of it, and uh, we got the job done. We're champions, yeah, BSC I mean, champions. I mean, I was going to have a bit of a run, but I was thinking, I mean, I tore my bicep. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm one sort of hit away from that. I don't think I could really go that easy in, in that because it's five on five. Blokes were coming off the back fence. Yeah. And I can only imagine what they'll do if I was playing. You're a way bigger target than what yeah. I am, as in personality. Yes, as well. and they'll try and like tee People off and then it'll make me do that. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just sit back here and enjoy yeah. a couple of little um, vodkas on the sideline. It was good. Body Science did a really good job. Good tent there, had some good people there. Yep. Yeah, we had a, we had a good team. Uh, caught, got to caught, catch up with a few uh, people we're familiar with. Ed, yeah. Edwin Azatazi was yeah, there. haven't seen Eddie for ages. haven't seen Eddie in a, in a minute. Uh, and then Rainey. a whole, a whole lot. Rainey. Yeah, Tux was in there, uh, Aloni. Um, so a lot of our BSC uh, ambassadors and athletes, um, yeah. we were in the same team together and um, – uh, Teddy was Teddy showed up. Yeah, and, it was good. It was looking good. So hopefully Teddy's back on the field ASAP. Yeah, he feels good. He feels as good. well. So there's a couple of blokes that we we're having beers with at the start. Yeah, Jackson and Campbell. Oh yeah, the garlics. <laughs> they end up playing in the final. Yeah, I seen that. And I'm pretty sure they weren't ready, <laughs> but they carved up. Yeah, they absolutely carved up. I was watching them in the warm up. I'm like, I've been with these guys for three hours. They're not thinking straight. They end up carving up. Yeah, you know, the garlic guys. You know Sean Garlic's sons. Those are so his. They're uh, they're probably. Oh, I didn't know, but he kept he kept talking about fucking pies. Yeah, and then I, I, pies. I put it together just now. Yeah, he goes, "Do you eat pies?" I said, "No, not really." He goes, "Do you want some?" I said, "No, I'm good." Yeah. He goes, "What about pies?" I said, "What sort of pies are they?" Yeah. I thought they were the nonatinas or something like that. No, Remember no, who no. used to have those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, "No, garlic pies." Yeah, garlic like, pies. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Know. Yeah, I know Sean Garlic. I played um, against Sean Garlic. What a great human! They're uh, oh, and he's raised two great boys. Yeah, they're legends. They they're are fucking lads. good kids. They were at the uh, um, the uh, the boat party that we had. As yeah, well the, NFL. the NFL. Yeah, yeah. They they they're all time. They get a little bit loose. Away, they are. They're good yeah. kids. They're yeah. really good kids. Their well, brother, their brother Bronson plays for the Storm too. Okay, that's Bronson. Garlic. Okay, yeah. he comes off the bench. A good bit of a family for him. Yeah, and he's done really well, Garlic as well. Yeah, I don't hate his pies. I just no, the pies eat, are good. Don't eat that many pies. Well, I play at the coast, and we got them at the coast. So at the turn, yeah. at at the ninth hole, pie and sauce before we get Man, on. Love, and yeah, it's, bit it's, of bit of comp on a Saturday and Sunday. That's yeah, what I got nice. up to anyway. After he's done really well. He's killing it. Yeah. Um, we're killing it too, mate. Mm. Our subscriptions are flying at the moment. 23K, uh, 33.7K on Instagram. Uh, and make sure you leave us a subscription on Apple and Spotify. Leave a podcast review. All of that stuff helps us. I say it every week. And I the reason I say it is because we continue to grow yep. as a brand, as a company, as a partnership, three ways, yep. as a tripod. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can't, I can't thank you guys enough for – uh, continuing to support us, and we got new people that are coming on board. Uh, I've got a text here from across, across, across the ditch, uh, across the is it the Atlantic Ocean? Oh, yeah. I, I think it could be the Atlantic Ocean. I don't know what one my, of those uh, bodies to see that well, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that in the YouTube reply soon. But uh, before we kick it off, mate, we talked about BSC. Oh, actually, 
pardon me. Let's recap the weekend. Uh, How'd so, you go? How'd you go on the uh, it's, it's been a, It's been a rough couple of weeks. So I started well. Roosters plus yeah. four and a half. They look good uh, to start the week. But Manu, Manu, despite being our... Yeah, of the week, He's up there. of the week, he uh, he didn't score. He did everything but score. Uh, Storm minus seventeen and a half. What an effort from the Bulldogs, Mace, yeah. um, to keep it so close. It almost should have won. Munster, no good. Dolphins plus seven and a half. That was pretty much gone when Hamasay Tabuai Fido um, mm. went off and Flegler was ruled out before the game. Manly plus six and a half. I get that, but Manly realistically should have won that game. And if Corey Waddell, um hands would have done on that first try, and Tommy Turbo would have gone over, but that wasn't the case. <laughs> Uh, Cowboys minus three and a half. Parramatta Eels were good. Chester scored though at three dollars for me. Um, Sharks minus ten and a half. Just get home against a very uh, showed some balls in there. Yeah, big South. effort from South Sydney. Nicola didn't score though. Dragons plus one and a half. They beat the Tigers. That got up. Ben Hunt didn't score. Um, the Raiders minus eight and a half looked good with about twenty minutes to go. But the Titans come storming home, mm. and that was a classic last night. So. We'll talk about that. So all up on the year, uh, the outlay has been 960. Uh, the kitty is at 832. Right. And the minus profit is 127.50. So I about need, even. I need a big well, – We need a couple. Hey, 127 go, go, go. down. <laughs> Just get a couple. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season. So – Please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1 800 858 858. All right, let's get into our BSC Dog of the Week, yeah. Mace. And this one is a joint one because. Yeah, we couldn't it's really a, split it, it, it right? It's a, it's a couple of factors. No one really stood out like across the board, but uh, I thought this guy kicked us off on Thursday yeah. night and he was a beast. Yeah, and I was thinking that. I was like, yeah, you're against Newcastle, you're up there. And I know I've played for Newcastle. And I played for the Roosters as well. And playing up there is fucking hard. Thursday night game, they packed it all out. They're thinking they're going all right. Like Newcastle's not going bad. They just lost the lost to some really good teams. Newcastle favourites. They're fucking good. Yeah. They are good. Yeah. Um, KP doesn't do a hip pointer. Mm. Like he sort of took him out for, you know, obviously the last the first half yeah, or the last minutes. bit. About a little hip minutes. pointer. If no one's had a hip pointer, yeah. don't sit there and judge. Yeah. Right? Bang, get the needle, let the needle. Start wearing in. Then he started moving. Once it wears off, you're back to where he was. Joey Manu, I don't know what it is with him. How fit is that guy as well? Like just to be like, I don't, how many touches yet? Like 20, any 30 touches? That's an underrated, yeah, 30, 30 touches. That's an underrated part of like when you watch someone do do what he does. Yeah, we understand he's strong in that, but uh, he doesn't drink alcohol. So no. That's a factor. But like he plays Joey right Manu side center. He might get 10 to 15 touches a game. He goes yeah. from that to covering another nearly six or seven K hit-ups off the nine, supporting everywhere, out the back. Like, his involvement is ridiculous. It's what, a, what a blessing for the Roosters to have that guy. Mm. That back five is ridiculous. When he's when he's going like that, they get off the back of him. Yep. Those big, big, big bodies. And then Smith can go. They could like, yep. be dangerous if they get that shit together. Victor Joey Evans. Manu, I can't say enough about him. BC Dog of the Week. Joey Manu, 30 carries for 347 metres, 136 post contact, two line break assists, one try assist, and 11 tackle breaks. Can we be what a dog. right with the stats? They yeah. said he had 370. He beat Gutho by one metre. Is this official? Because yeah, I, I want to know. Sure. I want to know. Check was, us in, get us in the comments. I was chasing it today. So on the NRL website, they've got three – what did I just say? 349? Was that what I just yeah. said? 347? And then I went and checked the Fox Sports one, and they had him a little bit lower, around the three twenties. Uh, it was reported, I think I seen it on Bloke in a Bar, said he, he three seventy, I saw. Yeah, three seventy to begin with. Um, so let us know if you if you've got the official stats. That's what we found this morning. Um, I thought he'd broken the record, but Same. even if he didn't, um, just Who quickly before we move better. off, Joe Mo. Yeah. I, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of comments and, and, and around it and you can be critical of one thing when it, you know, sort of it comes to the Joey Manu situation about not playing there and you can start looking at ways that he could could be a part of it. But I think it would, it's it's almost like sad to think that he will never, if the reports are true that he's going to be heading over to French rugby, that you never really saw Joey Manu for a full season at fullback mm. because we've seen him. Uh, performed so well for the Kiwis at fullback. He's ridiculous. And, and the one part that he, he he needs work on for sure is his ball playing and being able to strip defenders. I mean, the Daniel Tupo pass was reasonable at best. Like it was, if to me that was yeah, it was forward. And and even that that was his one try assist. He still needs a little bit of work on it. But 
you look at Charles Nickel Klockstad, for instance, like that wasn't his bread and butter at the Canberra Raiders, but because he got so he many had reps seasons at, at fullback reps, reps, habits, habits, you and never like, got, he doesn't get that. We're never going to see that from Joey Manu. Teddy takes all the reps, and the second string fullback would be doing that. Joey just sits on the right side. He's yeah. got that mad flick. He's got he can beat that person. That's his bread and butter, right? Mm. It ain't the nice, you know, the crisp hands, the three on twos, all that stuff. He doesn't have to do it, and it sucks because mm. he probably will go to French rugby. Yeah. It's, and it sounds like he's probably going to go down as one of the best centers in the game. Yep. Slash fullbacks, slash five eight. It's just talent. There'll be just it'll, talent. It'll, it'll be one of the best centers of all time with an asterisk next to fullback <laughs> yeah. and five eight. Like it'll be because what, 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 what did he, could he play been? fullback? <laughs> because he had arguably one of the greatest fullbacks in front of him with yep. Tedesco. And then even when he, even if when they don't both play, both play, Joseph Swally, he goes yeah, right there at fullback it's a as well. Combination. Uh, they've got they're so blessed at the Roosters, and that's again why we're so critical last yeah. week, right? When we're talking about the Roosters. All right, let's get to the YouTube replies, mate, and then we'll get into the games nice and quick. Yeah. This one I just wanted to chuck in because I thought it's cool, and I and I mentioned it before. I don't know the bodies to see that well, but this one's from Tex Merck. G'day from Texas, USA. Chooks would prove a big point if they can win tonight. Well, you're right, Tex Merck. They got the job done, but I just wanted to chuck that in because shout out to Texas. Yeah, yeah, Texas. It's just cool, you know. We're big like, in Texas. You know, we, we do the, the potty over here we run into people whether it's you know at the aqua rugby or, or, or events we go to but a lot of love um, whether it's and, and he, i don't know if you're an expat over there in aussie or maybe it is uh due to the game being shown in a in the u.s yeah. maybe we've got a couple of american fans that are listening in uh, no you did a oh, good, good good work at promoting the game while you're over there as well mace uh this one is from benjamin kendall hey legends how awesome would a magic round be with all the teams wearing the he heritage kits Throwback vibes and a huge audience get to see the jerseys all at once. Did you say that last week? No, I said they should all use it for the same week, but not Magic Round. Magic Round would be good. Magic Round's a good shout. It's a good idea. Yep. I like you it. You like that one? Yeah, I like I do. It. You like that one? And uh, I think that's a great, that's I a great it, idea. But I like it. I like yeah. it. Heritage jersey. My one pushback would be Magic Round so big, all the sponsors would be like, nah, you're not removing our sponsor on Magic Round because yeah, everyone's you, you watching. Get, well, you get the same sponsor, don't you? Everything? No, because the, you're not the, putting the like the Canberra milk on there. You're still going to put well a lot. Uh, there's uh, back sponsors as well that you'd have to remove for the name and number that we tossed up. For mm. you know, you know, yeah. my my part of it was if you do the heritage jersey and you want to sell a shitload of jerseys, put the name and number on there as well. Imagine like a Ponga one at like imagine yeah. how many kids would be rocking a Reese Walsh it's or a Ponga make one. Money, I think. The clubs, that's all they're about, making money. Yeah. They're going to sell a shitload of jerseys. Oh, regardless, they'll sell jerseys. Sponsors will be a little bit angry. I, I think, yeah. <laughs> You're paying half a mil for the back. Do you think, so even a, a, as like a, a, an ex-player, if you were to magic pay, uh, potentially pay Magic Round back in the day, right? Mm. And um, Play like, Newcastle. You, you get, the OG you, one. You're, <laughs> you're, playing for, you're playing for the Bulldogs. Uh, Sonny Bill's playing for the Roos. He's got a 11 Bill Williams. Mm. You've got 11 Mason. Fuck, you'd be more inclined to swap that after a game too. You know, it'd be cool for the players. I'd be mad. I reckon it'd be great. Yeah. Uh, both, right. both ideas are great. All right, here's, what, here's the questions. Uh, starting off with James Gozzo. Nothing beats level podcast on a Thursday. Listen to half on the way, half from work, and the other half on the way to footy training. Question, lads. New to play in league and playing on the wing. Who would be your best wingers to study? Can be past or current. Love the podcast and really makes me feel like I can immerse myself in the sport. Yeah, it depends how old you are, kid. Um, look at Brian Toto. Look at, look at his defense. Because I think he's the best defensive winger. I think he's slept on because he makes so many meters. But like his defensive systems that he's in out at Penrith, I think they're the best. I'll yeah. be looking at Penrith. I'll be looking at Taruva. I'll be looking at Toto because they've got the best system. Um, Toto's been the premium winger mm, for the last. But if they always look about his attack, I'm just like his defense is mint. You don't really get around him. You know what matters too? Like James Gozo, watch your body shape as yeah. well. That's important. Like uh, Brian Toto would be about five eight. Five nine. Don't disrespect him, lad. I think he's a bit taller. He's not already me two or six <laughs> I know that. I reckon but, he's taller than Ren, and yeah. he's five eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. um, or are you a taller winger like the, the complete opposite, Dom Young, uh, for the Sydney mm. Roosters? Like, try to find your body shape. I would, I would say would be my um, best advice. Who would you look at? Um, Apart from Toto, would you look at it? Would, would you look at a young Dom Young? His Dom defensive young. systems. He's picked up a bit more. Yep. His Newcastle's systems not that good defensively up there. I'm trying to find someone who's sort of in in the middle range. Someone who's like you know six foot one. Here we go. Uh, Shilling kid, the kid from Canberra. Oh, here we go. So uh, Lukey's just put in Brian Toto is 182 centimeters. 
So what's that? It's what is that, Lukey? So I'm. I reckon I'm, he's I'm five, five ten, five five eleven. But you know, oi, whenever it comes to measurements, he's lying. If you're small, you always go up. And if you're uh, if you're a light dude, you always put your kilos up. And if you're a big guy, you always put your kilos down. Well, I'm 196 centimeters, so he's, he's saying six foot. Brian Tyler is not six. Bro, foot. he ain't six foot. He ain't six foot. That's Rennie Matua. Yeah, that's Rennie Matua, six foot. He's five eleven at best, five ten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's crack up one, but the, you know when you see the <laughs> Rennie having a go at Rennie because Rennie thinks he's six foot. Yeah, in the, you know, whenever the boys put he's up about the measurements, a centimeter off. Um, yeah, so that would be my advice. Go find someone that's you know similar um, size. Uh, some of the Speed. some of the great wingers mm. of, of the past, like the Wendell Sailors, Josh the Morris, Bro- the Morris twins, the man. Morris twins. Go and have a look how they defend. Yes, some of the best ever. Yeah, Morris twins would be would be uh, right up there. It says uh, yeah, five nine. What you just said it was six foot. Now it's five nine seven one one three. The data was wrong. <laughs> okay. So Luke, he's changed it again. Okay, Mace, this isn't a question. This is just a really nice comment from someone on YouTube. This is from Warren Godson, and he'll never forget this moment, mate. Uh, never forget what Willie did at Belmore one day. My son's team came down to play Canterbury Boys High in a Buckley Shield semifinal, and we turned up to Belmore to train, and the Bulldogs were still training there. So the coach said, you can't be here as we are still training. Willie's came over to the boys and said, it's okay, come and meet the players. For 14-year-old boys, they thought it was Christmas for a bunch of country kids. So well done, Mace. And mm. um, I always say this to people, whenever anyone asks me about you, and, and we always get real condescending or, or backhanded <laughs> compliments to you. Oh, wait, I, I always thought Willie Mason Sorry, was a flog man. and all this sort of <laughs> stuff. But this is a side of you um, that I don't yeah. think a lot of people see. I know you, you – you, you, it's hard for yeah. me to sort of say this to you now and you yeah. and embarrassing you a little bit, yeah. but you do a lot of work with the youth and I um, feel like this needs to be um, – Little things like that, like – because I know being – I always put myself in those shoes, right? Imagine being a 14-year-old kid turned up to – Toronto West, from yeah, Toronto from Toronto, West. going to Newcastle training and you're like, you're, like, you're 14 years old. Yeah. You want to be near him, right? And I'm like – and I could see him. I could see him there. Yeah, you remember like, the, you remember kids, the day? Yeah, most yeah. kids, I just went – just. Don't, fuck who cares? Just wait around here. Yep. Get all the boys to come over when we finish. Yeah, because awesome. we're nearly finished. Like we're doing like either extras or anything like that. And the coaches, you know, the coaches are pretty strict on shit. Like, like fucking, they're not going to tell you to go away, but they don't really want. You know, they also get um like especially if it's like close to the end of the week, yeah, they start getting fair. paranoid about yeah. people watching the training. Would have been captain drone. Yeah, it would have been a captain drone. They just rock up because Belmore's public. You can just roll in there. Yeah, anyone, anywhere, and double unless booked. we unless we unless we lock the gates. Yeah. Yeah, you just roll in there and just um and have a look. So yeah, and yeah, and back then, yeah, coaches would get a little bit paranoid. Yeah, you yeah. film coaches. Everyone's got the particular like same sort of plays, but like I think now because the game is so heavily uh, recorded, like there's just so much information so everywhere. Easy to you, do, man. Yeah, like now I think the coaches understand that there's, you know, like back in the day, a big thing was at the start of the week keeping uh, changes on the down low. Yeah. Oh, don't let them know about this. Doesn't matter now. If a kid if a kid gets named at the start of the week, it's going to be out within a couple yeah. of hours. No one can keep a secret anymore. No. Nah. You know Have a look I mean? at South Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's Jeez, a, we'll that's get a prime to that. example. We'll get I to never, that. I've never – I was listening to um, – to Gordy and I think Jimmy Graham talk about it and one of the journos was like – he was going word for word what fucking someone said. Yeah. Alex Johnson about Latrell, like, threw them all under the bus. Mm. Fucking dogs. Shit like that should never, ever fucking happen. What do you got for Suzuki? Yeah. I'm disgusted. Yeah. I can't it's- believe that. That was word for word. And then he throws Alex Johnson under the bus about what he said to- about Latrell because Latrell wasn't in the room. Oh, that um, Fuck. conversation. Yeah, that if that – I heard that. If the, but that's just rumoured, right? That's like – Shamus, sorry. sorry. Uh, Shamus, sorry. Ca- carry on. Well, then Latrell, what if it's not yeah. true? Yeah. What if it's not true? Then and then it's you, bad reporting. you're throwing, you're throwing. A, it, well, that's what I'm saying. It must yeah. have fucking happened. You're not yeah. going to throw AJ under the bus like that with Latrell unless you just hate the club and you're trying to start fires because that's fucking awful. Producer Luke, he's on fire today. Oh, there we go. Because Luke, you've been someone, doing some fucking yeah, homework over the weekend. Because someone in that room has told the fucking journo straight away, this is what happened. So that's disgusting. I'll just report what Lukey said. So Lukey just said because people can't hear it that uh, Shamus called 
Demetrio to get uh, confirmation on the story. And although he didn't confirm it, he did also didn't deny it. And you could tell he was shocked. Luke, he said it sounded like he was shocked. So uh, was that on the Sunday footy show too? Uh, well, yeah, Sunday footy show. Okay. There you go. Wade Graham was, talk, was talking about it as well with Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Everyone was just – anyone who's been in that – that's an inner sanctum. That should never, ever get out. You should be able to say whatever the fuck you want to whoever. If it's like this, is this confrontational shit – it fucking stays there. But that's my point, Mace. This is the world we live in now. Like, yeah, but not 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 that bad. Not when it's not when it's just the players. Yeah, it should never get out. Like, why are you telling a fucking journo anything? Mm. Yeah. Oh, what happened today at training, mate? So oh, what, this happened. So get what the if, fuck out of the club? So who who, who do you reckon? It, I don't know. From? So was it? So that was it definitely a, wouldn't have been AJ ringing. So yeah, he's not someone who's in that room at that time. And uh, with that specific, probably playing reserve grade. With that specific story, so AJ was uh, uh, like the stuff that AJ said isn't that bad towards the troll to as well. Be in a in a closed environment, like we we've yeah. had. We shouldn't celebrate. We shouldn't be celebrating him kneeing Fox there. You right? So yeah, that was that was a conversation. But like specifically around that comment. That's shit that Skett says in video all the time, right? Yes, but it, it should never leave the video. Never, ever. never. And, and this not, would have been in their private, yeah. like um, when you do back fives. Mm. It would have been back five stuff. And yep. they're, oh, that's great work, whatever, whoever the coach said. That's great work from Latrell. And he's mm. like, we shouldn't be celebrating that shit. Yeah. He got sent off or he's, now he's out for three weeks. We're not, we shouldn't be celebrating that. That's fair enough. That's yep. fucking leadership. Yep. AJ's got the balls to say that. And he's got the rep, he's got the runs on the board to say that. Yep. That's just like, that's that's great. The best, the best teams keep each other accountable, like yeah. That. So it was. It does take a lot of balls to say it, even to like, even more so when it's a star. Player. But they're making, yeah. But they're making it a big deal because it's about Latrell, and because that's the nature of where South are at the moment. But too. Exactly. But that's what happens in when you're in a sport like this, and there's confrontational sort of meetings all the time when yeah. you're in there. When someone fucks up, yeah, you make them. That's what great leadership. That's what that's what it does. Coaches question. Co- coaches will question you, and fucking good players will as well. Yeah. That's what happens. It should never – my bottom – should never, ever fucking get out. Yeah, it shouldn't get out. That is disgraceful. Yep. Uh, all right, mate. Let's get into the footy review on the games. Uh, the Roosters, 22, defeated the Knights, 20. Uh, as you mentioned when we were discussing the BSC Dogs of the Week, it was the 20-minute period where uh, the Roosters went bang, bang after the Daniel Tupo try where they are basically just rolling through the ruck. Uh, yeah. They made a couple of breaks. Shout out to Joey Manu who was mm. our BSC Dog of the Week. Dog. But KP just couldn't get up uh, uh, a couple of times. And the cheese try in particular. He couldn't get up. He, he was just, on the ground. He couldn't, he couldn't move. But credit to the Roosters too because they were playing nice and direct. They, knew. they They found a weakness and they just kept on going at it. And then, yeah. and, and then credit to KP in the second half of bouncing back. I was talking about hit pointers before. Yeah. Like it's like having a, just a dead leg on your – like it's, it's an awful feeling. Yeah. That's why you couldn't get up and power through it. It's actually really sh- – it's a it's, sharp Yeah, pain. It's, it's an awful feeling. Um. How sharp did he look in the first 20, but mm. Oh, I was looking forward to seeing him. And in the second half, he started yeah. to show, be, look, look himself again. Stepping everywhere. The needle kicked in. He was good. Um, but they, when they're like that, the Roosters, yep. and this is what's going to be we, – we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, right? What happens if they win when Connor Watson's a runner and then you got Keary who's mm. just orchestrating? Mm. And then when you get Sam Walker back, where do you put him? How much better do they look? They, they Someone play. needs to run. Someone needs to direct. When both of them are there playing, and they play sideline to sideline. When it, whenever one of them is missing, for some reason, they both play direct again. Yeah. It's weird because Kiri's the 5'8". Yeah. He should be just running more. Sam Walker could be doing whatever he wants. And then, like, I think Kiri's, Kiri's the runner. Otherwise, someone's going to go after this year because I'll figure it out because Brandon Smith's playing lights out football. He'll go after quick play the balls, Lindsay Smith, after – the back five just comes at you with like six foot five timber, yep. bang, bang, bang. Joey Manu, he'll run. And then Nick they'll Radley. kick. Do you know what I mean? Like Radley's off the back fence. Cheese has had a good – Crichton um, looked like fucking he's back to his best again. Cheese has had a good month. Uh, I had I had Crichton for two points in that game. I thought he was outstanding. I thought he was outstanding as well. Terrell May for me is – their, their in-form prop of, <laughs> of the year so far. And he just got extended to so shout out to Terrell May. What about like – the, the Mays are getting paid, baby. The couple of plays that he had – Late in that game, the tip Fucking on one in the game. Yeah, the tip but on. The, wait, what about Through? the little little yeah. kick from Crossland? Yeah, nah, stopped. Game over. Weapon. Yep. Like <laughs> I've been he's like 110 kilo. I've been saying this now, and and this this is where me and you get a little bit different sometimes on opinion, yeah. right? 
You got mad respect for the OGs and shout out to the yeah. OG. Hargraves, like him, Hargraves is a 300 gamer. Terrell May for me is their best prop this year. Should be starting over Jared and Jared can bring that that power off the bench. It's different starting a game, mate. It's different. You need that he, dog like Jared. But he, he also has started. He is. He's all right, but he needs like he's – when he comes, he needs to get off the back fence a couple of times. I'd love to see that because he does have – because I, I think he's a product of being – I don't think he was a front row his whole life, right? I think he would have been no, playing he the backs. He, he's, when he was just say when he was younger, he would have been a lot smaller, right? Yep. And he would have had mad footwork and shit. Now you're like six foot four, 110 kilo, run through people. So Jared played 32 minutes, had five carries for 43 meters. Yeah. Well, then so like, he's getting to that point of his, his career. Time, yeah, on. of course, but it's getting to that point of his career where I'm like, I understand you. You got to give respect to some of the OGs to yeah. a to a point, but when you're getting that sort of output from players, then you, for for me, you start him, and then Jared can play that thirty. Because if he's only going to play twenty or thirty minutes, and this isn't like sometimes it feels like um, I'm being um, very critical of the OGs. Father time is undefeated. No is, one has mate. beat no one has beat age ever. This and eventually where, you get to a point in your career. People, when, when a fear factor comes into it, right? When you're reading the team list, when you read Terrell May and when you read Hargraves who's starting, okay. that okay, comes into that. account because when you're at the other prop, you're like, fuck, he's gonna give me 20 minutes and I'm just gonna give me the whole you know what I mean? Like not gonna it's not gonna be an 80 minute war with Hargraves, but he's gonna fucking come at me. Yep. He's you know, when you're not Terrell May, he's like he's going to come off the bench, give me good minutes. There's no fear factor there at all. If you're another prop, if you're another prop on these other side, you're like, yeah, well, it's fucking, you ain't worried, mate. Trust me, but you're fucking still worried about Hargraves. Yeah, he's yeah. got that shit in him. I would say and he'll the, fucking go at you. The strength of Terrell May too is he actually gets better as the game goes on. He's so too. fit. Yeah, it's his fitness levels are fucking oh, outstanding. Mate, it's, it's outstanding. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like if he can get nice little pass, but like. Fucking real direct running because he does he slows his momentum down because he fucking steps too much yeah. before the line. Yeah. Like, mate, back fence and I'm pretty sure he's that I'm pretty sure he's quick. I haven't seen him do it yet. I want to see him do it. Yeah. Because he's got all the other skills that you want a big prop to have. But I need him come off the back fence because I think Lindsay Collins is doing that better than him at the moment. Yep. Um, so he's a he's a future of that club, man. He can play he's, how old is Terrell, mate? Terrell May is about 24, 25. Yeah, he's so, coming into his prime. Yeah, that's the prime years for a front row. And he's got skills. Like he, you, he won him the game. You know what? One thing that I noticed as well, yeah, he did like those that, Those, that plays, those two play, plays he won. And then the quick tip on. Yeah, and then the save. So like, nice. It's beautiful. Uh, and, then, yeah, and the little grubber at the end. Um, yeah. That's nice soft hands to, to come that's up with that play. It's beautiful. In the 79th minute, like he's been out there from when Hargraves come on. He's been out there for 60. Yeah, he played 60, 58, 60 or something. Love it. Um, you know, one thing I noticed as well too that I, you know, just a little positional change. So I, I believe this is uh, signs, and this is maybe Robbo identifying the signs of times at the moment. Oh, that does that sound right? Sounds signs. S sounds cool. That's it's it's wrong. <laughs> signs of time. Sign of the time. Sign of the times. That's the one. Thank you, Lukey. With wingers these days, and what's happening? We look at you know we're going to talk about Zach Lomax and the Dragons yeah. right now. Instead of bringing Junior Pongo onto the wing. Uh, to replace who was the centre missing? Because oh, Joe Marnie went to fullback mm. and put Joseph Swali back into the centres. They started Joseph. They they played Joseph Swali on the wing. Better. And you get two wingers, six foot plus, just bringing the ball back. So jo, uh, Daniel Tupa had two thirty seven. Joey Manu had 228. I mean, sorry, and Joseph Swali had two twenty eight as well. The way I'm seeing Swali develop, right? Mm. He's twenty years old. His best football has been at fullback or wing. Yep. When he can either create a lot by himself, because if you give him early ball at left center or right center, he don't have that mad palm. He doesn't have that real crazy step like a Willie Tonga step, Mark Gazzini, shake your palm. He just wants to run through you. He's a swerver. He's a right? swerver. So yeah. if you can put him at the at fullback, he can have a look wherever wherever he wants to run. And if you put him on the left wing or the right wing, he just fucking beelines for you, steps one time, swerves, boom, and he'll just get the bumpers. It's, it's me versus you. Yeah. I'm fucking strong, and he's 20 years old. Yeah. Right? The bumpers are out, finds his front, gets off the quick play of the ball. But as a center, he loses he, momentum on the shift, yes. eh? Because yeah. he needs to wind up. He needs to wind up. He yeah. needs 10 or 15 to really come at you. Mm. When you get early ball, he can only just, you know, he's 
He's not really shaking you. He's not a pure center. Yeah. That's why I think in fo- when he plays fullback for the Wallabies, he's going to fucking destroy teams. Yeah, his kick returns are going to be strong, oh, and he can boot the ball long as well. Mate, so he's he's a he can still do that on the he can still do that on the wing in rugby union as well. Yeah, because I'm a rugby union expert. Now of course too. you are. <laughs> Um, yeah, but do you think that? Like, I was just looking at yeah. him. You look at his game. So much better I'm on like, the wing. You're way better on the wing or fullback. Yeah, you know, like, and that junior Pongo, like, he is. He's got skills. He's all right. He's okay. You yeah. can chuck him in the centers. I actually don't think that there's a a big difference between centers and wingers these days. And I actually prefer probably my better athletes, like Zach Lomax, like Swali. I like them better on the wing. That's probably the most entertaining point of the whole, like, football of the whole um, weekend was just seeing Mulatalo. And Lomax and these wingers just showing this acrobatics. You know how hard it is to fucking chase a ball 30 metres in front of you and then just catch it by yourself and then offload it. Some of the shit that Zach Lomax and Muller Tyler was doing. Do you see the, it's unbelievable. You see the Xavier Coates try sister, Remus shit. Smith? Like, like these wingers now, are, they're freaks. different. They're different, man. And they're getting better and better. And I'm telling you, like I, I, I said this now for a while, I would – lean towards paying my wingers more than I would centers and that's just my opinion but we'll see as this, as the season goes it? on what what sort of who sets in- the market right? yeah yeah someone's what- got to set the market like just say Xavier Coates comes off the wing I mean off 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 contract how much is he signed for all right here's the one the same same I thought Remus Smith was really good if you're Melbourne Storm and they're off contract at the same time Remus Smith and Xavier Coates, Xavier Coates. who's your priority Xavier Coates yeah Simply because I think he could play a lot of positions as well. Okay, I think he's just a wing. Okay, the other side, Nick Meany and Will Warbrick. Yeah, Warbrick. Diff. Yeah, that's a hard. You know what one. I mean? So go to go, go to the Knights. Let's go to another. Let's get. Yeah, yeah. Give me some like, other ones. Well, so the other one, the example that I had at the start of the year, right? Was Dallin White to the Lesniak or Rocco Berry? Yeah, fuck. And then I'm, I'm, I'm mainly going <laughs> wingers. I want my wingers running like those dudes. Okay, the other side. This is before Roger turned up. Yeah. Roger's an exception. Marcelo Montoya or Adam Pompey? Mm. Yeah, I'm with you, mate. Montoya, right? Montoya. Yeah. There's only a couple That's of fucking OG I'm centers just, when you got like a yeah. Ma- Marju and a Best. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. picking Best. Gags. I'm still maybe picking Marju. Oh, before, before Best. Just, Come on, bro. Just, just Best. Just Best. Yeah, just best. nah, nah. Not, not way like, ahead. Not, nah, not landslide. Not for me anyway. Fucking what? I love Marju. I'm a big Marzu yeah. guy. And especially because if I can get Marzu for 500 and best for 800, give me Marzu every day of the week. That's my yeah. point with it. Not like for like for value. Who else? When you bring value into it. So mm. get, here we go. So like, Who's the best centers in the game? Tony Staggs or Colbo? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a question I've got yeah. for a little bit later, but that's because those two are centers at the moment. Mm. And I think only one of them is going to be able to stay. But um, – yeah, Katoni Staggs and Cobo, you're having them over Marino and Arthurs, but even yeah. Arthurs is- I like Arthurs. Arthurs. He's still not coming near both those guys. He's not, but- Val Holmes or Tuolangi. <laughs> Val Holmes. Val yeah. Holmes for 800 or Tuolangi for 500? Yeah, I, don't think, yeah, I don't think he's getting 500 if, you, if he's off contract. His next contract, I reckon he'll set the market, Tuolangi. Who, Tuolangi? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's a good conversation. Yeah, it is right. because like that's but because back in the day, <laughs> yeah. who are you picking? The center's always the big dog, man. Oh, uh, in, in a heartbeat. Willie Tonga or Matt Utai? Oh shit! Ooh. Love you both. Not not picking. Yeah, big big pimping because back in that day, all that's day, all those center. two are the fucking best. Back I could never days. separate those two. All right, let's before we move off this game, let's get yeah, back yeah. to the Knights. Um, the the gay guy the Dane gay guy no try oh. which sucks because that was a fuck that was, that was vintage a mad guys. try that was you know he, he, he hates hearing the the term origin gags because it feels like <laughs> it's a backhanded a, compliment he's the dude but that move was so good but obviously Kiri for me again this is uh, it is black and white mm. uh, Kiri outside shoulder but these Smart halves defenders mate these halves now are sitting that. right on the uh, the back rower's shoulder. And they're there. You can't not run into nah. them. They're, and and once they get close, they're committing with their outside shoulder now. Because imagine the line you'd have to run to get on an inside shoulder, right? Because you you've got to be wide. It's nearly – you've got to run across field. That's how tight Kiri is, right? Yeah. And, like, he's right next to Crichton. I think Crichton's here. He's there. He could yeah. probably touch him like that. But smart. It's mm. smart defense. Yeah, it is. Because, like, this guy – like, if you just say the lead runner – 
You'd have to run like the stupidest line and you're not going to engage anyone. And you might even clip Crichton too in the – Yeah. Because he's so close. If you try to go real, yeah. uh, so hard on the inside, then you actually might clip the back row and still be an obstruction. And if I was a if I was a three-man, I'll be looking at the way Kiri in that defence. Mm. Defend like that. I send it so a lot over get, the weekend. So I you think, don't – yeah. I think more teams are doing the fan shape than the up and yeah. in. I think that'll be the way that uh, teams defend now with the obstruction rule for sure. Especially with a good lead runner. Mm. Like when you've got a Kaloma Tungi, if you've got a – Zell, those guys who run really good leads, Crichton, they'll be really tucked into their four man. Yeah. Um, I thought Kai Pierce Paul was it's probably his best game he played. He's so good, mate. Yeah. He's gonna be a Just real player to figure for it him. out. I think, and I've said this now for a couple of weeks, the Knights are missing an X Factor. Mm. I want to I, I want to see him have a crack at Will Price and see what he's got. Jack Cogger's safe. You know what you're gonna get from yeah. Jack Cogger. He squares up nice. He's he's been a nice compliment. Him and Hastings are the same for me. They're two halfbacks. It's like the Kiri and Walker debate. Oh, Hastings is way better. Hastings has been good. Way better. Hastings has been good the last couple of weeks. And uh I think they both square up nicely. They both play on ball. I think they need someone that can create something. So when so so Kalen doesn't feel like he needs to create everything. <laughs> Would you start him, uh, Price, or do you come off uh, come off the bench for a couple of games? Get him in, just get him straight in. Let's away. Have a look, because like they're f- they're two and four, right? Yep, two and four. A lot of teams are two and four. Yeah, um, like it's safe to keep Cogger in there. And look, you mm. you probably bought him for a decent lick, but uh, yeah, I think if you look at what Kai Pierce Paul has done, he's arguably the most dangerous player outside of Callum in the Newcastle Knights team with the second phase that he's providing. I don't know. Just He's trying to get more confidence. He only played five games. Let's get don't yeah. Don't be in such a rush to see this kid be killing be killing it. Like he showed what he could do against a great Roosters defense, mm. man. Yeah. Couple of line breaks, getting some more one on ones, like trying to find his sleep, paying big minutes, doing a lot of work. Um, I, like, Adam, I like Jacob Saifidi. Yeah, he's I been better he the last couple of – him and Leo Thompson have and been Thompson was a lot good. better the last couple of weeks. Thompson's like a little Fisher Harris. Mm, he is. He's a young fish. He's a young little fish. Can you see the fucking build on him? His back's like that. I heard, bro. I heard Joey speak about it. When he played in the New Zealand Maldives with uh, James Fisher Harris a couple of years ago, he reckons that changed his mindset yeah. about where he is and, and what sort of player he is. He can handle see, himself, man. You fish can, is a dude. You can see some fish in him, can't you? Yeah, I see it. Um, he looks like him. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, the first game on Friday night, the Storm just scrape oh, home against the Bulldogs. Mace. My boys. They go down another close one, but fuck. The Bulldogs fans, I don't know. The Bulldogs fans will be proud, but they'd sort of be getting over these close losses. I was going to say that. It's going to be one of those years where they just compete, 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 and it's fucking heartbreaking. Mm. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. You can see the effort that they put in to get – like the amount of players that they had out, right? The Storm had a full deck, and they still held down 10-0, and they nearly – and I've, they should have won. Yeah. They should have won. Can't fucking die against Melbourne, man. You have to play to the 80th minute to get those guys. Well, I love so, that game plan, but yeah, it was wide, wide, boom, yeah. boom, boom, straight through the middle, offloads. You got to play football against Melbourne. Well, do you, it, do you think it's a sign of? It's I, I, for me, it's good coaching. I like love it. my my part, I, I've been really critical of the middles. You're missing a couple of middles, yeah. and it's been obvious, right? Gus has been going after Adam Fanor, Blake, yeah. uh, Terrell May, some of the names that he he was looking for. They're trying to find a front row at the moment. They don't have it, so you play Jake Turpin at lock, and I then like you bring Jake Bailey Hayward on a little bit later on. Smaller guys. So what do you do? Play Lady footy cattle. rather Lady than cattle. rather than just try to knock down the front door with a lighter pack. Play a little bit of footy on them. I love it. And play to your strengths, right? Yeah. Look at our left side. Kick hours on a t- fucking tear. Yeah, Bronson Cherry yeah, was good. good Bronson too. Cherry was great. Good to see the Cherry come back and look sharp. Fox looked good. Everyone was there. But that's our strength. Mm. It's our outside backs. Back row is good. You know, halves can you know, play decent football, good kicking game, and we're gritty and we hustle. Mm. It's all we want. Let's start. Let's let's start with the winners, though, and we'll get to more Bulldogs after this and a few a few players and the Sam Hughes Simbin, which I didn't like. Um, Oh, this is this is elbow. this is three games now. Yeah, uh, he deserves to be sinbin for being dumb, deserves in my opinion. Like it was stupid. It was stupid. But let's get to the storm culture now. This is three games they've won at home. Uh, just got home against the dogs. Uh, just got home against a weakened Broncos team, and the Xavier Coates try against the Warriors in the last minute. Yeah, they could be really down the bottom. So. Uh, Positive or are you concerned about the storm? Like, what's their form line really like? If they drop, maybe at, at least one, maybe two of those games. How do we view the storm this year? Didn't 
But they didn't. They didn't. So they don't care. Okay. All they're going to do is build, build, build. We won those games. We scraped through. You know what I mean? Who cares? What Everyone goes after Melbourne. You've mm. got to bring your best game against Melbourne. You mm. are bringing your A game against Melbourne. You bring it against Penrith. They're the guys all the time. You have to bring it. They've normally been so clinical down there in years past, though. They just haven't got the same cattle either. Yeah. You've got to look at some of those players out there. They're, they're decent first graders, but they're just not the fucking teams that we're used to facing. Yeah, the vets in the middle. Yeah, man. Like It's like yeah, they're a different team, but they've still got it. Pappenhausen was still good. Money was still good. Jerome's yeah. still good. When it come to the crunch... You know what I mean? The that fast ball. It's like fucking Jerome Hughes got out of that tackle. Boom, boom. Munster puts that ball on fucking Bloor's chest. Bad defensive read. Fucking game over. You like the look of um, Joe Chan in the first two weeks. We both did. Yeah, but Sean happened? Bloor's looked good as Bloor well. Bloor looks better. He missed a couple of games of injury, Joe Chan. He's opened up the door for Bloor. Yeah. Who do you like better? Bloor? I like Bloor better. You like Bloor better? I saw him okay. last week and he looked. He just looked a lot sharper. I think uh, Chan probably needs a couple more games. I don't know, maybe off the bench or somewhere in the middle so we can find his feet a little bit more. Yeah. He just wasn't getting enough ball. Yeah. And he was left side back row. He was, yeah. Like, you know, you, that's that's the lion share of the ball. Yeah. And I, and, and I think it but that was sided before- with Munster. Yeah, but he never played with Munster No, too, I'm saying Joe like Chan. he didn't play with Munster, yeah. so they're all over the shop. He had Pezzett. Yeah. Jody High Roller. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about um, – so Tui got injured in this game. Could – Open up the door for yeah, a big nasty, big nasty calf. I think he just tweaked his calf. First five minutes. Yeah, so we we could see the return of big nasty. I hope so. Mm. I hope they've settled their beef down there. I'm not sure what's going on. Because did he not re-sign last year? He did. Be Maybe the year piss and belly off somewhere. The end of the year. Yeah. Something's happened there. Yeah, but he, he otherwise you're playing him. He's been uh, he's been going good. I think he's played for the North City now the last Bro, couple of weeks. You want to imagine what he'd do in reserve grade. Yeah, of course, but fuck! Look what he does in first grade. These are the standards that Melbourne. I know, and that's what great. you've got to love about yeah. the culture, right? You've yeah. got a guy like Nas, arguably one of the most damaging forwards in the game. It's not toeing the line properly somewhere. Mm. You're in reserve grade, kid. Yeah. Uh, back to your dogs, mate. You know what I love about the Sherry edition in particular is that it moves your left edge away from being so top heavy. So when yeah. If you were defending the uh, the Bulldogs, you would look at them and go, all right, you, you put so much energy in the left edge because it was Burton, Kickow, Crichton, and uh, Fox. Yeah. Now, the right edge is so much stronger, especially when Preston gets back. Mm. On the right, you've got Preston, Crichton, uh, and Karaz moves Kraz. to the wing. Kraz, are, are, He's are, a weapon, mate. over 300 metres. He's a weapon. Weapon. Your biggest problem, though, on that right edge is the halves at the moment. Hutchinson, um, look, he competes really hard, but I think it's time. He's not going to be the long-term answer. And I think there are a few moments where he cut back in and ran when the hands would have done uh, and at least shift it and let's see what they can do. Mm. But he plays a very conservative style of footy because it's just not he in his nature. His, yeah. He knows his role. I think it's time to either have a look at Sexton and see what Sexton can do with this team. I think this mm. is a better team than what Sexton played with last year and specifically that right edge uh, because my biggest concern on Sexton is his defence. But if you have Crichton next to him, that's going to help him out a whole heap. Heaps. And then – or uh, I heard on – I reckon Hutchison's defence is good. Oh, he, he is. No, his Hutchinson's defence is yeah, good. Yeah, he's good, eh? Because he has a go. That's why he's in the team in my opinion. But attacking-wise, I think he too often – Gets spooked from wedge Limited. defenders, and he steps back in when they're. You've got to show some composure as a half and make the pass and find. And if the I'm play. the back rower, I'm like, don't take it, please. Just give me early ball. Yeah, see, that's the problem. I'm, no, I'm just saying, like, just don't run yourself. Just yeah. give me the ball. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather just say playing with shift to your other halves. I don't want you to run the ball when you can easily pass it to me. Yeah, you set up the next play. Yeah. Let me get, let me build momentum and let play just, in the short side like, or whatever. And if you're the coach, you don't want your halves getting tackled too much when they don't have to. Yeah. Give it to the other big boy outside you. Don't what dummy it, and go unless she's going to score. What about the deputy, mate? So shout out to Bailey Haywood, makes his debut. Cool. Uh, he's a hooker at the moment. but He was a half. Someone he's, on the mowers said he can, he can play he's half. half. Yeah. No, he's, he's he come through the system as a half. Well, let's so, have a look at him, eh? I'll ring zero for <laughs> I'll tell Ciro and Gus. Yeah. What do you well, mean? Not for me. I think there's Bulldogs nah, fans no, that we get yeah. in the comments. I think um, – I don't think he's played himself out of the team. Mm. Hutchinson. He'll- I don't know. Mm. Yeah, because you know why they're competing so hard. He competes hard and he does, he does all the little things that you want. Kick chase. Yeah. Yep. He's, he's, he's got that. You know, it's just – you know, if you 
It's a tough one. These are the, tough. these are the toughest decisions to make outside of OGs who who are reaching that time where you're like, all right, there might be a younger cattle coming through, and the hardest one to do is the under talented player that rips in every week. Yes, yeah, we. And then he's and, that. And he's that you right? Epitomise everything that you want with yes. your standards. Yes. So what you stand for, he's doing everything every single week. But he lacks so a bit of polish. <laughs> drop. Yeah. So they're the hardest decisions yeah. to make for sure. Fucking very hard. And he's right. a good dude. You know he's what I mean? Legend. Like he's one of the best blokes. You know, he's a good clubman. Imagine, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Imagine being in that position if you're a head coach. You're like, what am I going to do? He does everything I want him to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, he's not fucking JT. He just can't make the big plays when God. required. All right, uh, the second game, uh, Broncos defeat the Dolphins four, uh, twenty-eight yeah. to fourteen. Um, People were critical of this game. I was, you know, sometimes you get a gauge. I look at comments on our YouTube comments, and then you see other social it was medias. High quality. Um, the Dolphins were having a real good yeah. crack to begin with. Mm. I give full credit to the Broncos because Broncos' defense was, was outstanding. I was about to say that outstanding. They're they're, they're a team. They you are. put Haas back there, get a full strength Walsh, uh, like, Reynolds, um, Reynolds back, um, Pierre Kuru, the, the back row on the left side. Um, Jordan other- Jordan Ricky was supposed to be out. Like yeah, his ankle was fucked. He played the way they move minutes. and the way they defend is like they're like Penrith esque. Yeah. They're moving with the ball. Like it looked. How many times did the Dolphins look like they had a massive overlap? Yeah, looked like they're about to score. And a then like times. you know, Hammer was in the clear. It's just like boom. Yeah, it just shuts down. Everyone's moving so good. They're so fit. They're, they're, they're a very good team. Yeah, they very are very good team. Yeah, very well coached. Uh, Dean Mariner was been really good the first five weeks. Yeah. He misses Corey Oates. He had a couple of blunders, but yeah. still they work hard for each other. Yes. These teams, don't they? They've got. I think like because I've been critical because I want to see more of Xavier Willison who looked great, obviously. Um, but when you got guys like Fletcher Bacon, Corey Jensen, and Kobe Hetherington, they've got really good movements defensively. They and I work think in this, hard, man. I think in this day and age now, uh, coaches are looking at. I think as fans, because a yeah. lot of people what super coach coaches and all this sort of stuff. Shut so up. they look at the stats, but. Defense is going to win comps in this competition mm. and the momentum. And if you've got good movements defensively, yeah. then you're going to be a really good And that's team. what Willison, like, that's what he needs. He's still working on He's that. He's still a big body. Yep. Yeah. But, like, can you have him and that other big dude? Takura. You can't have two big, big bodies like that. So give me so – Give me Payne one Haas. of them. So give me Payne Haas. Give me Payne Haas and I think Corey Jensen. Jensen's I've, done I've, enough. Corey Jens- Jensen's done He's enough to vet. start. He's an undergamer. I want Xavier Willison and I want Kobe Hetherington guaranteed. And then it comes down for me. It's a coin flip between Fletcher Baker and Takura. The more Willison scores easy tries like that, the more confidence he'll grow, yeah. and he'll be just like a fucking beast. He called for it too. Trust me, man. Like he's, he's, he's not scared of anything. No. I had a good chat with him in Vegas. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, really good chat. Yeah, so you will dominate this fucking game, big boy. You just need the, more games under your belt, a bit more experience. And I said, there's nothing you should be afraid of in this game. He looks, nothing. He looks like a bit of a hybrid of Payne Haas and then Tino Fasilmalai yeah. with the. He's got the mullet and yeah. he's and he's sort of got Tino so swag, man. Footwork with yeah. Payne's power. But I'm like, what are you? What are you scared of in this game? The only thing you're scared of, and you're that big, is fatigue. Mm. I said, there's no one that can scare you in this game. I said, no, no one's going to hit you. No. Even if you run flat out at them, they can't high. hit you high. They can't fight you. Yeah. Where's the fear factor? There's no fear factor in the game. The only fear factor in the game is you being fatigued, yes. getting fucking caught, not coming across or something like that. Yeah. I said, Shut am I right? He goes, he goes, yeah, you're yeah. right. I said, you will dominate this fucking game. Look mm. at you. Mm. Built for this game, kid. 6'6", six, six, 120, footwork, late footwork, offload. Like he's got everything. You first said, mate, you should dominate this game, mate. It shouldn't be hard for you. You know the beauty, beauty of these young guys that are coming f- through, whether it's Willison or Takuda, who's only played one game. You've only got to look at your two leaders now. Payne hasn't been playing, but fuck me, Paddy Carrigan has oh, been outstanding. Well, he was he was going to be my dog of the week if I had to, but I mm. we couldn't go past Joe Manu. It was no. outstanding, so we agreed on that. Paddy Carrigan, uh, he's been, he'll, he's been close to. I, th- I think he's got back to back. He's got the most know. meters out of any forward in the game. Oh, he's killing it. He's and that's like putting Fanor Blake up there, who, who averages like about two twenty a game. Fanor Blake, <laughs> yeah. so he's doing more. Yeah. Obviously, he's getting the lion's share of the ball. He's getting everything. Plays eighty minutes because of Payne Haas is out, yeah. but he's taking that to a new level. And he also ball plays in yeah, the second like he's getting the twenty five touches, but he's passed about five or six times. But like that's that's what a leader does. Yeah. That's what one of the best forwards does. He, your other dude, Payne Haas, argue, arguably one of the best props in the game. He's out. I'm your dude. Yeah. And they follow him. That's what. That's uh, that's how you take the next step yeah. to, to yep. being an elite player. Love that's it. what Paddy's been now for Absolutely the last couple of years. 
Um, we mentioned it before with all these players getting up. And there were reports a couple of weeks ago that Reese Walsh was shut down. It's not official, but you'd like to imagine that Reese Walsh will get done at some point with the Brisbane Broncos. There's no way they're going to let him go. Therefore, I think uh, there's a conversation around they're probably only going to be able to keep one or the other. Selwyn Cobbo oh, no. or Katoni Staggs long term. After that performance from Cobbo and what you see with the X Factor, who, who's your preference between the two? God, that is so hard. Far out. So if they come off the uh, contract at the same time? I don't think they're necessarily off contract at the same time, but I think – actually, I'll, I'll get it. I thought Staggs only signed a couple of years ago. No, he signed a while ago because he signed the big deal first. Um I here. would honestly put my money into Cobbo. Yeah. Because he can play wing, center, and fullback. Here we go. So we've got Cobbo is off at 2025, and Katoni Staggs is off 2025. Same yeah. year. Like, Same Because Cobbo can play every position. He's, he's proven himself. He'll probably play left, center, more in, versatility. In He'll play. He can play origin, left, center, and wing. To play, he can play fullback. Yeah. He can play anywhere. Where, where Staggs is right side, center. Yeah. And really, a really good right side center, yep. most dominant, probably right side center in the game. But because Cobo showed his versatility, he can just go, All right, you know what? Do you want to play left center? I can play that easy. Mm. You play left wing, right wing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for him. Yeah, He's right just a football center, mate. fullback. He can play anywhere, it doesn't phase him. Depends on the yeah. It depends on the contract and, and what you go to pay him. But I think I'm leaning. I think I'm leaning towards Katoni just because of the consistency that I've seen over the. Over yeah, the, he's feel, Australian side. He's Australian I, center. I at feel the like Selwyn can come in and get in and out of games and have real like brain explosion moments. And and I think of like, I've got a, I've already got enough talent in this Broncos team, and there's some young guys coming through. So that's why I'd end up keeping. How Katoni. old is Cobo? I think sure there, uh, there'd be about two or three years difference. There wouldn't mm. be. There wouldn't be too far. Would off. that come into factor? For sure. Because I think have, Cobbo's way younger. Let's have a look at it. So, Katoni, where's Selwyn? There's Selwyn. Wing at date of birth, 5th of June. So, he's 21. I think, I think Stags 20, yeah. Oh, 25. Fuck. I don't know. It shouldn't it should, Stags has probably got another. Let's just say if he comes off, he's 27 years old, right? Mm. Yeah, it's I'm not sure. Probably, it's probably well, he's Cobbo. Got, and he's 23. It's probably Cobbo. And I'm like, you know what? That's That would come into, you know. Negotiations and go, all right, well, this kid we can have six, six, seven years of his peak. Yep. Has Katoni in two years peaked already? You know where I can envision straight away? Whoever doesn't sign with the Broncos is going to become Redcliffe? a rooster. Oh, oh, really? I thought Redcliffe. All right. No, hey, no. You know Queenslanders, man, they don't want to move too far, bro. Yeah, true. Hey, we'll just go, yeah, I'll just go play down the road. What about down the road to Gold Coast? All there. Mm. They yeah. don't really, they don't, especially, I don't think you'll never get Cobo in Sydney. Yeah, I don't, th yeah. I don't think you'll Cobo doesn't strike me as a Sydney nope. guy, does he? You might get Stags. You might get Stags. He's a New South Wales boy. Yeah. But yeah. that's about it. You are yeah. not getting Cobo past that border. There you go. Katani Stags, Sydney Roosters, Roosters. next contract. Yeah, that? done. It's pretty much done. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Nick, bang. Kicking off Super Saturday, the Warriors were at home and drew to the Seagulls. In extra time, went all the way. Uh, both teams could find positives for sure in the one yeah. point, Mace. Uh, Manly blow that one. Manly blew it, man. And the SJ penalty, run me through Fuck that. What What's your thoughts on hell. it? Which one was – run me through the SJ penalty. So uh, he goes for the field goal. Oh, when the guy hit his leg. Yeah, and other oh, hits his leg. It's the rule, right? You can't yeah. hit the kicker. Just yeah. don't fucking touch him. I get it. Yeah, but yeah. we went for him to break his leg like uh, young uh, Ilias. For sure. That's, that's, that's the thing. Yep. So I don't mind it because yep. it's the rule. Yep. Put kick pressure on. Don't fucking touch him. It's yep. too dangerous. We don't want to. We don't want to injure any of our key players or anybody in in that particular moment. Why? Put the pressure on. Don't touch his leg. It's been quite de divisive. This one. I sent yeah. Freddie and Joey were arguing about it on the footy show as well. Like Joey, like, you, they were that, talk. Sorry, they were talking about that. Players used to come at their plant leg. Yeah, our kick pressure was was fucking dangerous. Yeah, you're putting all these, and that's why like Freddie be like. Get away! But they wish they had that rule. Yeah, blokes would be flogging Joey and Freddie off the ball all the time. Yeah, so I'm glad they're doing those things. Okay. I'm glad they're protecting the kickers. It's like NFL; you're protecting QBs. Yeah. They're our star players. I don't yeah. want SJ to break his fucking leg. That's a good point. I don't want any of. I don't want J. I didn't want JT or Joey. Any of our key players getting fucking injured because of because of kick pressure. So what do you tell Alawai in that in that instance? You then? just pull out. Pull. You just got it. You just got to kick it. As in, no, pull out a little bit earlier. Well, you just don't go, just don't touch him. Yeah. 
Or yeah. don't, you know, like don't don't go near the front leg. You've got to chase on an angle that try and hit him like just his upper body. Mm. Just nowhere near the front leg. Just, kick, just say he's kicking like that. Don't chase this way. Yep. Like chase into his body. Yeah, okay. So yeah. too far across. Yeah, don't, don't go too far across. And that's fucking hard to judge. When you're tired. So hard to judge. So, but like if 79th you're gonna, minute, if you're gonna put, row. You're going to have to put that pressure on, but it's going to have to be like, you just have to watch your angles, man. Mm. Yeah. I just don't want players to get injured like that because we just saw it with Lockie Elias, kick pressure, bang, broken fibula, tibia, yeah. out for the year. Yeah, and that's that. And that, do you think that played a part in the decision yes. as well? For sure, right? Eh? Yep. Yeah, I just think it was – sucked the way it went down. Um, I thought the most impressive part from the Warriors was when uh, they got back into the game with the Jazz to Wagner try. I'm really mm. big on body language and stuff these days. I think momentum uh, – you can see – if you can really identify yeah. when there's going to be momentum swings. There's a calmness about this Warriors yeah, team it's now. scary. And although uh, they were helped uh, by the Luke Brooks intercept, which was stupid mm. – um, and he's been good Brooks this year, but that was just one of those things where he's like, you're not at the Tigers anymore. Hmm. Just, you know, like you've got Lady talent, you don't have to siege. force it. You're going into half time. But like in particular around that try, I watched like Wade Egan, Sean Johnson, Chansey all come in. Jazz Devanga was obviously pumped. Uh, he gets the try. But everyone else, get many. everyone else is around him was like, Business as usual, next job sort of mentality, and that's the credit to the Warriors because they've got that at the moment. It's scary because mm. that old Warriors team would have beat by it would have been thirty to ten. Mm, yeah, you know they had that momentum going, and they just didn't get phased at all. Yeah. It's the leadership that they got through Torhu Harris and SJ. They look at those bodies like Tuivasa. Yep, they've got a real calmness about them, which is quite scary because mm. they're sitting there going credit to Webby. Yeah, who cares? We're fourteen nil down or whatever. Like who cares? We're going to come back, boys. Mm. We'll get, we'll get it. We'll start getting the ball. We'll start completing. We'll start scoring. Yeah, that's it. And I think they believe in their system they so do, much. Webby has installed some sort of fucking superpower into mm. them, and they fucking got away with that twenty-two all. I was shocked. I was shocked. I was just like, Manly should run away. They look on tur Turbo, looked on DC, their main, their main guys. Manly always play well against Warriors. Yeah, too. man, we were a good record. Yeah. We, we won over there in yeah. 2015. Yeah. We played in SJ's um, game where he'd done his um, tib fib. That's right. It yeah. was too. That's fucked him. Yeah, that was sad. Yeah, that, yeah, that was did. sad. He, he, he yeah. struggled because then he did his Achilles a couple yeah, of years yeah. longer. Because I remember been, that was the turning yeah. point of like, you know, he, he was fucking like that and then it sort of played out him out. Now he he's had a back there. He years, just, yeah. yeah, he looks like. Um, the game looks very slow to him now. What about that try, mate? That's, you know what I mean? That's vintage. That's yeah, right. just you look at it and go, it's, it's not that hard for him. Yeah. Because he's 33, he's thinking about like retiring. But he probably done could. That in a no, I'm just saying, like, but yeah. when you go, th when, when he when he come through the system, right, he was just that pin up boy, right? He was the dude. Mm. Good looking cat, can play, step, do everything. Mm. I'm like, who is this pretty boy looking motherfucker? <laughs> shit. Who, and he'll step the shit out of here. He's cold, yeah. right? And he's pretty tough. He's got all these little things. And then like a few injuries happen, sort of brought him back down. Yeah. It was hard for him to get back up. So I'm happy for where he is right now. Because his the mental fucking drain it would have had on him, right? He's sure. a pin-up boy in New Zealand, man. Yeah. Moved to Cronulla, had to get all his shit back together. Then he went back going, do I still have it, right? They started mm. down him yeah. at Cronulla. I think everyone did. Everyone, oh, fucking everyone did. Everyone thought he was done. Yeah. I thought he was done two years ago, so honestly. Did I. After he had, he had that, when he went to Cronulla first, before, I'm thinking, before fuck, why the would up. the Warriors even like yeah. flick him? I thought he was a golden child there. Mm. And then they had that one decent year, then the next year really fell off. Yeah, they had anyway, COVID year, remember? They were yeah, away from family. Yeah, that really yeah. affected And I think him. that really affected the Warriors and affected him. Um, and, or, I mean, when he was at Cronulla. Then he went back there and just like, bang. And then he fucking stole Dalian. Mm. Who would you put – I was just thinking about that yesterday. Who would you put as the best seven for the Warriors ever? Is he more Stacey Jones? Oh, when dad, they, so, so they're going to name their top the, – um, in the last 30 years of Warriors, Yep. who is halfback? Stacey Jones, seven, Sean Johnson, six. Yeah. Who, Can, I, I don't know. I, it's because of my age group and because- I like, don't know. Like, would you, so I'm not putting Stacey at seven. You are? You're not? I am. You are, yeah, yeah. But I don't know where- I'm not. I'm, it's a tough conversation. I'm gonna put him at, uh, well, I'm going to put one of them on the bench because one of them's not a six. They never played six. You never, did, you, ever. You can play. You can play Sean. Oh, you, can, you can, but you he can. never did. Well, at, at, at the start oh, of- he's probably played 10 games. At, at, six, he's played- at, at the start of his career, he was more of a six. Like, even though he wore the seven, because they had Jimmy Maloney, right, in the six at the start of his career. So Jimmy was always a six. But you could argue similar to the way it was when I was at Manly where 
Kieran wore the six and Daly wore the seven. Yeah. It was actually opposite. Yeah. And and Jimmy Maloney was probably more of the organising half. And you know what Shawnee did? He played his best work off the cuff. Yeah. So if you put the little general, Stacey Jones, with Shawnee Johnson, you don't think he's going to thrive at six? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying because they're not – they're none of them's a six. Yeah, because they've never played. Yeah, they've never just genuinely like, that's a six. Yeah. You know, like Ricky Stewart. What do you reckon, Vice Ricky, fans? Ricky Stewart and Daly. Yeah. You know, that's fucking seven and six. Yeah. Kevin Walters and Alfie. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's a seven yeah. and six combo. They've never been seven and six. Yeah. So, Waz fans, tell us who you'd put. And Waz fans. Hey? I've got Waz out of you again. <laughs> yeah, Waz fans. Give uh, it to me. Or Warriors fans, tell me. Warriors fans. Waz fans. Is Mitch Barnett going to play Origin this year, Mace? No, I mean it's, it's all for it's all up for grabs, man. I think those positions. Yep, I agree. I, I think, think it's Payne definitely it's a, a different. It's a whole different regime. Fuck, and he's it's, been impressive. And it's mate. Whatever Madge goes with, he's been so good, Mitch Does, Barnett. Payne Haas is obviously your number one guy. Yep, I think Stefano gets my other prop. Yep, I'm, I, I'm I could put much. Stefano. I could put Mitch Barnett on the bench. Yep, maybe he'd be my, he'd be my top twenty two. I'm not sure what I'm doing with the back row. What? I've got Cam Murray. I've got, I don't know, Isaiah Yo, sort of, Olakwatu, yep. Liam, Liam Martin. Martin. Liam Martin, Olakwatu, Cam Murray, Isaiah Yo. Yep. One of them's on the bench. I think Yo, he might be on the bench, I think. Yep. Because I think I'd rather him play as a front, a middle. I liked it better when he came off the bench last yep. year and played and more just, direct yeah, rather than so playing fit, from yeah. the start. There's no Penrith plays in origin. So then you get an out and out front rower on the bench and then a hybrid like Mitch Barnett. Yeah, yes. And then with your hooker like – Wade Egan, Fuck Opie Carousel, Reese Robson. Robson looked good last night. Mm. Appy looks mad. He's doing a hell of a lot of work. We'll get yeah. to that game. Yeah. Fucking – I don't think he can do as much work for like another two or three years, man. Yeah. I uh, I think I think Mitch Barnett is uh, – Who else would be going for his spot, but Jacob Saifidi. Regan Campbell-Gillard, Junior Paulo. Gillard, Paulo. Paulo. Oh, uh, yeah. So then you – Hudson Young, Tyson you, Frizzell. This yeah. So he needs some cracking games, yeah. mate. Yeah. Fanua Blake doesn't want to play Origin, no. No, he's he done. He can't. He's done. Fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, so when you, when, when you mention those names, right, the Junior Paulos and the Campbell Gillards and the Stefanos, if they're not mm. like all locks, you know, None they, of them they pretty much – no None one's them, a lock, right, no. apart from Cleary. Payne Haas. And Payne Haas and Liam Martin. Liam Martin would be a lock. And uh, fucking – Tommy Cam Turbo. Murray, Cam Murray, Turbo, Toto. Toto. Teddy. Teddy. Yeah, everything else yeah. up for grabs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, on to Manly, mate. Uh, DCE scored a couple early. The first one was. Uh, you love those tries, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like Opportunistic fuck, is the best yeah. way to put them, but that's just Ches being Ches and putting himself in the picture. Um, yeah, we talked about the the Brooks intercept. I thought that was critical. Mm. They really missed our boy, our body science dog of the week, Nathan Brown, bringing that punch off the bench, didn't what they? Happened to him? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but um, they it, did. They honestly did. Yeah. Because I was just waiting. I'm, I'm, was this an early scratching or what? Yeah, I mean, it was. a late scratching? No, Same it was. as Flegler? I'm like, what the fuck happened to Flegler? The, it was uh, – Flegler well, – I found out about Flegler the, the night after because we, we filmed the potty at Thursday. I found out Thursday night he was okay. out. Yeah. And then I found out about Nathan Brown on Friday the day before because he didn't travel. I don't think he traveled. All right. I don't think he traveled. They did yeah. miss his energy. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Because, like, he's been – is when it? when they went through that low, and yeah. you get guys like Jazz Tavanga who come on for a little stint before he got injured, yeah. and those guys really fucking the second phase of the Warriors was yeah. the difference. I think Paseca he come out of the blocks. Yep, obviously not. He copped a little bit of criticism for his last game, not touching the ball for fifteen minutes. I think he had like eight hit ups in the first ten, so yeah. um, he was trying to make up for that. He's um, yeah, I know Nathan Brown's energy off the bench is, is infectious, right? It's like when Jazz Tavanga and all those blokes come off. Yep. I mean, come on, they really energize the, the whole Warriors team. It shows how important the bench rotation is now in this modern yeah. day game, isn't it? You need, like one, dude, you need one dude who's a, who is a starter. That's why we're about to talk to Parramatta in the next yeah. one. Let's get straight into it. Yeah. Parramatta defeat uh, the Cowboys 27 to 20. Um, and the King was outstanding, but I like what Brad did. He went back to his original bench rotation, Junior Bolo and Ryan Madison come back on the bench. Junior because Bolo, change again. Joe Offer and Galway starts. He was doing a good job of weathering the storm. And then you got that second phase that comes on with Bryce Cartwright being back. You were allowed to have Maddo come off the bench as well. That was That's what they missed. Bryce Cartwright was great. Yep. Um, but it puts Madison back on the bench. Mm. And he comes on with a little bit more time. Paulo was ridiculous. Mm. 
He looks fitter and stronger than he's ever been in the he, last couple of years. He looks like he really enjoys that role. Dangerous, man. The footwork, when he's on that left side, and he just he can't hit him because his left arm carries, spins out. There's an offload there, both sides. It's crazy. Well, you know what he is? He's coming on against benchies. Like, he's a starter. Yeah. He's oh, a starter man, he's every a starter. day of the week. But what he is, what that rotation allows him to do is come on against the opposition's third and, he, and fourth best front rollers. And even if your middles are stayers, right? They've mm. played over 30, 35 minutes or whatever. Yeah. You're still fatigued. fatigued when yeah. that big when big bass is coming off the back fence with footwork spinning and that, and you've already tried to handle offing our way and big reg yeah. coming at you, it's a, it's a great rotation. Um, and then Maddo comes on, he doesn't have to start games. Yeah. Just a couple of offloads here and there and just some tough runs and just defend. The second phase, Jam- Jermaine Hopgood plays Jermaine more of a- Jermaine Hopgood was good. He, he plays tried more of a front row. That yeah. was a great, that's a great line that. Yeah. Very underrated. If you've got a good ball player like who can throw those face balls. That was nice for a middle, on, a face mate. ball across the- He's got a skill set, man. Yeah. He'll be playing Origin this year. Yeah, I think so. Him and Ruben Cotter are very similar players. Yeah, he's I a think Queenslander, isn't he? He's a Queenslander. Mm-hmm. He was uh, 18th man last week, and, uh, last year, sorry. And um, they've got so many troops that are out. Like, they're dropping like flies, that Queensland forward pack. <laughs> what a shame. Cohen Harris, <laughs> Cohen Harris, Tom Gilbert, uh, um, Tino. There are so many middles yes. that are getting Tino's ruled out. Horsebra. The bra's out. He's, well, he's got yeah, that hip yeah, flexor yeah. in last week, so he's missing time. He wouldn't have the been locked in there anyway, but. He would have been, been, been there. He, had to start, he needs to start the year yeah. to get in origin. Um, Dijon Arce, so he he um, he provided Dylan Brown more freedom to do what he'd done best, which I thought was great, but also showing a bit of class at the end to ice the kick it. Um, yeah. Dylan Brown looked good. My question now is, and I assume that he should have been the player uh, as soon as Mitch Moses went down, why didn't Brad use him earlier and – um, therefore, you know, Blaise Talangi, who looked really good in that Manly game, you may, maybe he doesn't get dropped all completely out of the team because yeah. he's playing so Morgan centers. Harper played so well that you can't drop him. Yeah. He was outstanding. He was his best good. Game, his best he game was he's really played good. for ages, so I'm yeah. happy for him because that, that means it's going to be unchanged for this week. Yeah. Um, but – Maybe maybe he wasn't playing that good at um, the Dijon Arce. At New South Wales Cup? Yeah. yeah like, that he, could like, be he it. Hasn't, he hasn't proven himself in the NRL yet. Here and there, like glimpses and all that sort of shit. Yep. But you need to be consistent. You need to be like, if you're not playing first grade, you carve the fuck out of reserve grade. Yeah. And prove to, to, prove, prove to everyone that you are a first grade. Or a training too. You don't know everything. What's, you everything. Sort of training. Yeah. The coaches put so much emphasis on how, you got, how, how the young guys train. You need to go at it all the time. And if you have a one or one or one or two off sessions, you're not pushing for a spot. Yeah. And then Blaze Salangi plays better at five eight or center or something. Like that. They're going to pick him. Yeah. And he's got uh, younger. They're probably going to invest yeah. more in him long term. So they want they will. Brad would have probably wanted to see if he can be an option. And I think Dijon well. Arcee's had a fair. He's, I don't think he's played a shitload of games, but he's had a few few cracks, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. He played at the Warriors to begin with. Then he went to the Cowboys for a season, yeah. and now he's at Parramatta in his third stint. So yeah. So it's like people have given he's him like the a journeyman backup, right? And he's how old is he? He would be about 24, 25. Still young, man. Yeah. Very hard. They're very harsh. If he was a front row, I'd be a bit more harsher on him in the middle because you should be like getting your shit together. But yeah. when you're a half, it takes a minute, man. It takes a minute. He's got the he's got all the skills to be a good player, man, but he's he needs to be consistent. Be Even if you just say, just say if he didn't ice that kick, would he have had a good game? Yeah, he was pretty yeah. good. I thought he was Same, good. like, would you thought – it's it's a hard one for him because it's you're not going to be Mitch Moses, but you've mm. got to come in and just make sure Dill Brown plays his best footy. And I thought he really opened it up yeah. for Dill. Dill was able to run the ball again. Yeah, I like that. Whereas like the week before with Blaze, Dill was trying to be the organizer too mm. much and it took away from his strength. Yeah. So I think that was the biggest positive. Dill Brown's a gun. He's a weapon. So Dijon Arce is only 23, that, mate. Sharp that right footies. Dijon Arce is only 23. Yeah, so there's still a baby, time. mate. There's yeah. a lot of time for him. Yeah. There's, there's a player in Dijon Arce, that's for sure, anyway. Uh, we talked about Brycey before. What about mm. the physicality that he's got in his game? Now, he fucked up uh, on the Tommy Dearden high tackle and it was sort of like a very lazy, silly Sam Hughes-type elbow where it didn't quite get him, but it was just – it was dumb. Did he get suspended for that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I love the intent as in the the intent for the physicality that mm. Bryce now has. You know like, I love, I like, know. guys running in? What are you doing? What are you running in for? Yeah. Like, to grab a guy by the jersey and say, don't do that again. You know what well, I mean? Back like, in your we were, day, you used to be able no, to throw I know, that but I'm like, do you see um, Jaden Sulka running in on Stefano? Yeah. And big Stefano just puts his fu- <laughs> double bang and put him on his it's ass. Good, it was the best Stefano of the weekend. Stiff arm. It was fucking hilarious. I'm just like, 
I know, I know that. Just say when we're playing, like you could actually fight. And I'm like, fight could not. When it, when they bought that ruling, I'm not running in anywhere. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Like you, you're coming in third man, and you're gonna like, no one can fight now. Just like whatever happens, just fucking let it go. It's not, nothing. Nothing's gonna come through with it. Mm. Everyone's coming out and pushing it, all that sort of stuff. It's a bit different when you get punched in the fucking head. Yeah. You're not coming in with that energy. Ta- some some are. Townsend is not coming in with that energy to a back rower <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting punched straight in the fucking head. Yeah. There's no fear factor. You're running it. Oh, stop it. Oh, whatever, mate. Get away. There seems to be no fear factor with the Cowboys around the errors that they continually oh, keep making. What was their completion rate? <sighs> Don't say it was in the 60s again. Uh, yeah, let me have a look, mate. Oh, let me get that good. up, actually. It wouldn't have been great. But it's more like the pressure it puts on them defensively and the, and the penalties and that as well. I'm getting it up here. Yeah, they don't. It's not really um... – what did they give you this time? It's just 72. See? And you'd be still filthy. It's Mate, you, you can't be under 75 this day and age. Nah. It's too good a side. Let's go. Let's have a look. I'm going all the way down. Kicking, kicking, kicking. Defense. So they're 89. So they, made, so they missed 33 tackles. Oh, yeah. no. So they missed 39 tackles. Uh, errors 11. Penalties conceded 8. Ruck infringements 2. So pretty similar across the board. Uh, if, if they fix those things up a little bit, and we, we, the great thing is it's round six, yeah. right? But Pending this has been happening seven. now for 12 months. I know, but they've lost one game. 12 months and six games. They've lost one game. This will be second game. Second game. Yeah. So they're four and two. Yeah. They're looking all right. Uh, yeah, they're okay. Yeah. On the ladder, they're saying, okay. Like, like they look, but if they're, they're, they're doing video this week, they're going, fuck, we just need to just sort our discipline out, miss tackles below probably 25 or something like that. Mm. Completion rates at, at 80 all the penalties, you know, 10, 10, whatever, and then we will win every single game. They should no, have still a, in the game here. They should have beat. They should have beaten the Eels. This, that's the problem because they've been in every game. So even the games that they lost, apart from who do they get blown out by? The Broncos, right? The Broncos, and that was awful. But that, you know, that that was like sixty two percent. But the problem is the 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 Titans, uh, the Knights game in particular. Like they're a way better team than, in my opinion, they're better than the Parramatta Eels on paper. Mm. But credit to Parramatta Eels, they played just a little bit better to get the job done. But there were moments through that game where you like. Looks like they could roll the eels at any point. And put thirty. Quick they just on got them. zero patience, mate. Zero patience, and Who that's why. That down to? And what do you what do you mean zero patience? They're not building pressure. Building pressure. They're just yeah. trying to shoot straight away and go bang bang try. It's not too far off. I put I put it down to Chad Townsend and Tom Dearden and yeah. drink water. They're, yeah, it they're, has to be. They're key players, and they're not necessarily the guys that are always making this. The mistakes, sometimes it's Val, sometimes it's Murray Talangi, sometimes it's Jeremiah Nanai, the outside backs. But those three guys have to be able to take it out of their hands. Yeah. You know, like sometimes just get to an early kick because they've got so much skill and they can yeah, score basically on every play and they're fit and they just keep going. But they're, they're doing too much to fucking tackling. Yeah, the, the, middle, the middles are. Yeah. And it starts tiring him out. Like you look at Ruben Cotter, it just looks like he's running Fuck, around. Did you see his, his head yesterday? Yeah. Double black eyes. You know what I mean? It's just like, like Tal Malolo, McLean. Griffith Neen's been impressive. Yeah, I, like I think Griff he's Neen. been outstanding coming off the bench. Tal Malolo's couple of stints was – I think he could play more minutes, man. Who, Tal Malolo? Yeah, I reckon he could. I'm, I know he's under game like restricted, restricted minutes, but like he looks fucking – he looks all right when he's out there. I, his movement – his movement carrying the ball just doesn't. It's not, like, like so I it's said, not it's not going to be like the Tal Malolo were fucking eight years ago, bro. But I mean, he can go out there and still be dominant. His runs were like, some of his runs were like eight to 10, 12 meters easily. Mm. And him, that's just him off the nine. Yeah. Like, surely he can give you more. Or oh, well, that second stint can be a little bit more because that first stint is 20 minutes. That's fine. Fine. Yeah. Set the standards, and he did set the standards. Him and McLean and Cotter. And then put the big griff of Neem on. He fucking starts making some good yards. And I'm like, he can easily get that. Middle part, just say like the ten minutes after half time, right? Yeah. To about ten minutes to go. These are the players. Any more like twelve minutes to go? Like these, fucking game could be over. Yeah, Jace Tom, Tom Alolo, These are the sorts of guys. Like at his age, him and Jordan McLean, they don't want to be doing extra tackling. That's what it's. That's what. It's that's doing. what's fucking him. Like yeah, these I mean, guys, they're outside backs and fucking halves are turning the ball over so much that Jace has like been a, a, a great servant of this club for so long. When he has to defend all the time, when. When you can let him off the back fence, he can still do some damage, but he's tackling too much. Too much. Way too much. Uh, and Scott Drinkwater, what a, the try was class, that last try that they scored. Mm. He does the point up into his family, 100 games. Uh, I didn't like that too, by the way. I hated it. But my biggest thing with Drinky, I love him as a player and he could be 
an origin player. Same as Tyrone Slow. He whiffed on that Joe Off and Gower try again. Get your body in front, son. That's he's missing that last piece. And he, I did it before with yeah. the Elliot try at the start of the year. Yeah. I was pushing for uh, for Scott Drinkwater to to be that next origin guy. But until he takes no care did. of that, and the same as Tyrell Sloan, who was good yesterday, again, but it's a week to week thing defensively. Mm. In this day and age of a fullback, if you don't make those plays or at least put your body in front, then you're not going to be considered well a top said. tier. Well said. Because uh, his attack is there. But I mean, like, yeah. His attack is the best New South Wales attacking fullback in the competition. Yeah, but look at our fullbacks. It's crazy. Um, all right. The Saturday 7 30 game. There was so much pressure and so much chat around this game. The Sharks 34 defeat the South Sydney Rabbitohs 22. Uh, the Rabbitohs show some fight in this one, Mace. But. Have they done enough to save J T J D through to the bye and then into the Panthers in Melbourne coming up next? Apparently. Well, he's not sacked. Then it's not Monday. yet, anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I heard there's a lot of rumblings around. You know, they say he had till this game and now they put up a fight, but you still get beat. Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you want to see? Did you want to see the W or the L? Like, is that is it's it about weird. putting is it about putting effort in? Because like they do put effort in. They've just been beaten. Yeah. You know, they haven't played that well. Everyone puts effort in. He's just been beaten by some better teams. It's probably the worst result for the higher-ups and people yeah, making decisions. Yeah, because it looked like he had a crack. Well, they had a crack. You fucking expect him to have a crack. That's it, what you, you need to do when you put that jersey on. Yeah. And I don't give any like If you're going to make decisions like this, yeah. stick to it. Yes. Now you're going to give him a couple more games. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say get rid of him. Yeah. But don't say some shit out there and then renege on it. Players would be thinking, mm. oh, what the fuck's going on here? You'd be, don't think there's 10, 10 or 12 players sitting in that sitting at the Rabbits going, fuck, I hope he's gone. Don't so, think, say that again. Say that don't again. think for a second there's not about 10 or 12 players in that Rabbits top 30 of going, course. fucking hell, he's still yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. That always happens. And they're probably 10 or 12 and... starters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like when, when there's smoke, there's fire, and I've heard enough shit, and I'm just like, wow, okay, well, you're going to give him another week, and then another week. You'll probably see the year out. So and what, who knows? What, um, Sorry, mate. They might, they might fucking come good. Yeah. Latrell comes back and he kills it. Mm. Cody starts playing better football. Jack starts Cody was playing. Good. Everybody starts building off this fucking effort play, effort game. Mm. I hope they do. You know what people don't realise is that obviously the, the coach is under the pump and, and people talk about the reaction from the players for the coach. But I've been in the situation before as well where you, you, people, people forget you're proud as players as well. Do you think – do you honestly think people like South supporters and everyone out there – that this game was for JD. Some might have. Fuck no, it's some not. Some might have. Yeah, well, some let me tell you now, yeah. it's not. Yeah, some might have. Some, he, I he, know. He, yeah, but he doesn't necessarily – yeah, because we know some. <laughs> exactly. Some, like, we've got relationships, but not every player is, uh, I would say, is totally against him. He, he would have I, know, some, I know, but there's not one player that went out there and go, I've got to fucking play my best football oh, yeah, for JD. Sorry. That's my point. Sorry, correct. There's yeah. not one sorry, player sorry. there. It's like we have fucking pride in ourselves and we want to go out there and yeah. win every fucking game. You represent you your family every with, time you're out there. Your family and everything like that. Not just your coach. Yeah. No one gives a shit about the coach. You're playing for those fucking 17 other players that are out there going to war with you. Mm. Not the coach. Okay, I understand Never. that. Never. Yeah, sweet. Even I fucking play for Wayne Bennett. Never. There's not one fucking thought process in my mind going, I'm playing for Wayne. Yeah. I'm, I'm playing for, you know, Steve Folks. Like, no, I'm playing for the players that are go out there with. We have pride in ourselves and our jersey and the club. Throughout the Our week, families, not the fucking coach. Throughout the week, they can implement stuff to make you put yourself in the best position. Once you're out there, it's you. you. Cross that white line, mate. It's all about the, the 13 blokes out there with you and your family, and that's it. And they stepped up for each other. I thought, uh, like you said, Cody was really good. I thought yeah. Tom Burgess was outstanding. Tom Burgess, he was that dude. Um, what about the Sharks, mate? Uh, Mulatala, uh, I can't get over him. Well, he's a weapon. He's eh? just freaking, he holds another. He holds the same energy as Jordan Rapana has. Rapana has. That's a good shout. Yeah, that's a great he shout. Fucking got that. Like he, they go off his energy, man. Yeah, and when he is making a few errors or, or fucking up and and, and yeah. starts to lose his confidence, sharks they always lose down. Yeah. yeah, when he's up catching balls, good. everyone's flowing around. That's a great comp. And I was just like, wow, he's got the same energy as Jordy. Mm. And some of the shit that he was doing, that ball that he caught and flicked Teague, Teague Will was just standing there. How he got that away, please rewind. That's probably one of the best plays you'll ever see in rugby league. Yeah. It's just very underrated because he makes shit look easy. Mm. Been going nice to play the left ground, just back flicking row. it like, oh, wow. He's been playing good too, uh, Teague Will. Yeah, but uh, Multal, outstanding. Katoa, outstanding. The fullback, outstanding. Yep. Kennedy, Kennedy has been – he's been playing – he's been some big plays – 
There you go. So Will Kennedy, right? Uh, that's a perfect example from the last conversation with Drinkwater and Sloan. And I always forget about this with Sloan. Will Kennedy is not uh, the biggest dude. No, he's not big. Uh, he is not uh, – um, Similar build to Sloan. Similar build to Sloan. You never, ever see Will Kennedy. I never question his defense ever. And he's not like a like a great defender as in the sense like he doesn't go out there and bash anyone. No. But he's just rock solid, always puts his body in the, in front and, and always makes the defense make the extra pass. Yeah, and he's and always, there, the he's always there underneath Nelly saving the try. Yes. Yep. Like he's underneath you. Like he's not getting he's, palmed off. He's a bit of a like a snake Sloth. defender. Like <laughs> you know how like he sort of he he's really good at taking he doesn't really like hit with contact. He absorbs really well mm. and then he's able to like Are you talking like snake the great Brett Stewart or a snake snake? No, it's like as in a snake like the animal. Bowl yeah, snake. like a snake where you're like you someone comes into mm. you and then you the more you try to get out, the more he squeezes yeah. you. Like he doesn't really snake, good job snake on the like line. Brett Stewart was a really good defender. Yeah, yeah, he was. Because he wasn't big either. Yeah. But he was like I remember one time he held me up fucking twice in one game. Twice. Yeah. Fucking snake, twice. Snake, yeah. Isn't it, this is when I was throwing fullbacks over the fucking fence. Yeah, yeah. So snake. Prick just would get on you and he just wouldn't. So he grabbed the ball and he just fucking just go like and he just wouldn't get over him. Um yeah, fucking hell. Will Kennedy, I'm, I rate him. He puts so when he's when he's attacking like that, that really starts their sets off. Because yeah. Jesse Ramian's a fucking animal too. Yeah. They've got a good back five. They always have. They always have. But it goes off Kennedy. Nine players, again, ran for 100. Um, they're another team. They're very similar to the – I think it was the Canberra Raiders the week before or another team. There were about seven or eight players ran for 100. Mm. They play very good complementary footy. Yeah. So the, the outside backs normally get in and they take a lot of the early carries and, and get heaps of meters. And, and then you get McKennis and Braley and, and, yeah. and Fanukin just making 30, 40 tackles per game. And then once they get uh, to the opportunity, like – Nico and, and and Trindle are going, doing a good job. Well balanced at like man. putting kicking kicks kicking to corner. Trindle's been really impressive. Been for really me, good. Mate. I like him. He's he's a perfect Robin for mm. uh, for uh, Nico's Batman. Cam McInnes has been good. Yeah, Cam McInnes is good. He runs those. He's a skipper. Can, yeah, runs those really good lines behind the ruck. Gets quick play of the balls. He really ignites their sets as well. He's like Cheese when Cheese moved to lock because mm. they played hooker. They know where to identify he's behind a the for origin as well. He'd be thereabouts. He, he wouldn't would, look out of place, he wouldn't, trust he'd, me. He'd be a type of player that Queensland would pick in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what else with uh, – so, yeah, I've got to give credit to the Souths. 80% they completed at. Um, what do you think of Jai Gray? He looked good. I love the way he took, yeah. took the game on. Like they tried to – He's kick. quick. He's another uh, Rennie Matur 6-1. I think he'd be yeah, about 5-5, five, 5-6. Five, 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 he's tiny, but he's um, – They he kicked him early. With a bit of gusto, man. Yeah, he, he had run, a crack, he? ran hard. Yeah. That's all you want from – your middle's all you, all you want to see is your fullback taking it on. Yeah. He's not he's not a big body, but he's, he's not skinny or anything like that. He'll put you nah, on. he's yeah, stocky, eh? He's man. Yeah. He's got good footwork. Didn't see that much from him around the back. There wasn't that many plays for him. They but, didn't um, have a shit But I don't think they really had that shape. They didn't have that much shape. Yeah. Yeah. On that left edge. Jack White was good. Cody was really good towards the end. Um, yeah, Cody just needs to really take that team. Yeah. And they go off his energy. He's he's showing signs. He's been he's been attempting to get him going, but for, for long periods, they're just always on the back foot. Yeah, and it's hard. And, and like people uh they're critical of players like um Luttrell and Cody and first guys to point the finger at because they're the biggest personalities and they're probably on the highest money. Yeah. But fuck, they need to they need to go forward. Mm. Those players cannot do anything without forwards going forward. When Tommy come on on his second stint in particular and yeah. just really got him going forward, like he started the game well, but then once Tom goes off, they just completely yeah, you lose. You got to it. rattle the middle. You got to have bodies flying everywhere. There's got to be tips. And once Cam Murray went off, that all went away. But yeah. lucky Tom Totola. come on. Totola, Totola went he did off. So that's a big injury. So that's what coincides with their effort, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because when you are down to fourteen or fifteen players, you got to put effort in. Yeah. You got to play those extra big minutes. You know, and that's what they did. They're first graders. Yeah. Yeah, they were good. Uh, Dragons were good on Sunday, mate. The Dragons yeah. defeat the Tigers 24-12 at a packed Campbelltown Stadium, which was good to see. Uh, there was a lot of heat in this game as well. Um, but the Dragons always sort of looked in control to me. And we talked about Ronaldo Mortalo before. We talked about yeah. wingers in the game. Zach Lomax doesn't like playing wing, but fuck, he's good on the wing. We said this last week. What is he going to do if they pick him on the wing for origin? Which I think is a massive chance. I reckon he's Imagine a massive him chance and Tyler. too. Yeah, I think they'll be the two wingers. Who who else will be going for it? Uh, Fox. Um, who else was the other one? Daniel Tupo's played on the wing before. Yeah, but it was, it was Fox and um, Suali is a chance. Yeah. 
And then it was in, Fox and Toto last year. Or if they ended up going with a fully fit Latrell and Tommy Turbo on the centers, then maybe Critter on the wing as well yeah. is an option. Well, he's definitely going to be up there. Yeah, he's going to be there about, um, isn't he? He just looks dangerous. Everything he does, he just attacks everything. He's got mad skill. Defensively, was really good. The, the, the attack from Tigers was fucking awful, wasn't I, it? I love what Benji said. He, he, he said that was their worst performance of the year, not because of the scoreline or, or, or just they didn't want to get involved in the tough stuff. Yeah, it was very weird. Like what? I'm like, why would – like it just really looked pedestrian, right? Mm. I don't know. Caesar, he was, he was a little bit off. Yeah. Like I just you need some I need a little bit more from from the seven there. Yeah, and uh, you've got um, Lockie Galvin. We uh, Benji said Lockie Galvin. We straight back in next week as well, so he'll straighten him. He takes the line, line on for it's a young a Sullivan kid. kid. Yeah. Six. Yeah, you know they don't complement each other that well. He was trying hard. You could tell the game meant a lot to him. He's going against his, his mm. ex team, and he was. Even Benji said he tried a little bit too hard. He made yeah. a few errors. Um, they target him too. Yeah. The Dragons team were yeah. going after him. They were trying to – they target him in the trials. They try to get in him again. Um, but I just think it just shows the influence or the impact that Lachlan Galvin's already had on this yeah. team. Like it's yeah, almost, Alvin and Caesar look good because mm. it takes a little bit of pressure off Caesar as well. Caesar, Caesar hasn't got those legs like he did 10 years ago. Right? No, no. Good kicking game. You know, Manage, like he, needs, he needs to nail those kicks, man. Um. Back to uh, Zach Lomax just before we move off. Apparently, it's close to being done. The Eels, 2.6 over four years. So that value is 650K. If he goes to Parramatta Eels on 650, good contract, bad contract. Good contract for Parra. For Parra. You like 650? 650 if you're going to get him like that. Yeah. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, I think that's That's good value. That's money. Yeah, that's good value. How are we looking at him? Imagine if he goes and they play him wing. (laughs) No, that's not going to happen. (laughs) <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I'm just saying. Imagine yeah. if he goes and goes, are you going to play wing outside Penasini? <laughs> <laughs> uh, even Flano had a shot after the game. He had a, b- a bit of a smirk. Someone asked him a question. He goes, looked pretty good on the wing, didn't he? And then couldn't help himself and started laughing. That's what I'm thinking. Laughing. It must be deeper than just playing wing. Yeah. It's got to be. Just, I think he just needs a fresh start. Yeah. Fresh start. So was, do you reckon St. George was impressive? Mm, the, if they play like that, Week in, if they roll their sleeves up, they're going to be a pain in the ass week in, week out. Mm. But they're still missing a shitload. Something. Of, yeah. Jaden Sewell's good. Jaden Sewell's good. Uh, They've got a good forward pack, mate. On paper, Harme Sally um, and Frankie Molo started this game. Yeah. Then you bring Mudders Laurie and um, Jack the Ballon off the yeah. bench. Good balance. Um, they've got a couple of like that. Tom Eisenhuth, he's not like – he's okay. He's, good, he's solid. A lot, of, a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, Raymond, Molo. Raymond, Molo. Molo's good. Raymond, Raymond Fatale's been good. Been good. Oh yeah, I seen one person ask that. Um, yeah. One asked boss what mudders. mudders. Is. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't mind St George. Yeah, like when they play real physical, I, I think they're going to beat sides that are like going to be like the bottom eight. The bottom eight they should really deal with because they're tough and they're physical. Yeah, you know, like whenever they get up to the, like a Penrith or a Brisbane, they're going to be. You're tested. not really going to. Yeah, because then it becomes skillful, right? Yeah, you're not going to out physical the Because they're going to pick it Sloan. Yeah. You know, they're going to try and tire out Suli and yeah. Ravalawa and they're going to try and do that kind of yeah, stuff. Good like, point. That's what Penrith's going to do, right? Good they're going to turn you around, turn you around, turn you around, come off your back fence, see how good you're going. Then yeah. just keep testing Sloan. The Tigers can't expose their weakness. No, no. And they're not going to do that because, yeah, their forwards were all right. I, th- I didn't mind Clem. Clem, <laughs> Clem nearly lost his shit by he the should end have been of the game. Ten, He should have got 10 twice. Tw- what, what twice? You, twice. The second one was worse, right? Yeah, the second one was worse. He just went, you know what? Fuck you, Lomax. And then just slid down to his legs. And then, and then, <laughs> and then popped him as well. I love Clem. He's old school, mate. He debuted in 2010 when you could fight. Yeah. So he's still got that in him. He's been suppressed. That dog's been suppressed. Yeah. yeah. I need that back out. Well, he I should have been suppressed in the sin bin. Yeah, he should have fucking twice in the sin bin. I didn't mind that. I didn't mind it. But that second one was just blatant. I don't like you, Lomax. Yeah. I'm front row, you're a winger. That yeah. was straight in the mouth and then slid down. And then, and then Lomax, punched him in the head. And then Lomax was, whoa, and he goes, bang. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, he's lucky. You probably, I think you'll probably see himself on the sideline. Yeah, for sure. He's going to get, I reckon he'll get suspended twice for two different in- incidents. The one oh, on, yeah. Hey, shout out to, two Kyle, two. Hey, shout out to Kyle Flanagan as well. Uh, he got licked by Clemmer. A lot of players would have stood down and he even like got that. up and, and, and looked and said 10 in the bin. He's Rather than laying kid. down, if, if he'd stayed down, Clemmer would have got 10 Nearly in the bin got minimum. Sent. Maybe sent. Yeah. I reckon his shoulder hit Clemmer in the head. It just looked really awkward. Have a look at it. His so, left shoulder hit Clemmer, but it was just because Clemmer's so big yeah. and he monstered him yeah. and just 
It was just a big man on a small man. Flanagan should have got sent off. Flanagan should have copped it. <laughs> Flanagan, you should have got 10. Clem should have gotten an award. <laughs> <laughs> he should have got VB hard earned fucking man hey, of the match. Did you like seeing that from Flanagan? Getting straight I up. I love and Flanagan. He's, no one ever tested it. No one ever questioned his toughness. He's a yeah. tough little kid. Man. It's good to see him happy over there and playing yeah. some good football. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like I was, I've. It's, it would have been a lot of pressure going there with his yeah, old man. man being a coach and shit like that. So no, he's um, um yeah. he's a tough yeah, I, love, I love that. Yeah. I love that shit. How yeah. we just got up, went fuck it, play on. Yeah, I wish more players would do it. I, the problem with the hip drop tackle right now in this day and age is whenever anyone slips in and around the legs, people were grabbing their ankles, and he yeah. had an opportunity to stay down and get himself not only a penalty, which they got, he would have got Clemmer sent off for mm. ten minimum if he'd stayed down. Yeah. And if he'd gone off for a HI, Clem could have got sent for, sent off. I guarantee you. That's the way they think. And it's it what if you'd be on the sidelines anyway. Who he Clem might, Yeah, he's might, done. He's he getting be. a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um the last game, mate, it was a cracker. The Raiders were doing it comfortably, but they hang on. Jamal Fogarty field goal right at the death. The Raiders win twenty one to twenty. Shout out to Fogarty. Yeah. When Fogarty first went there uh, and left Gold Coast Signs, I was one of those guys I was thinking, yeah, nice buy. Like people were, were going and um, crazy at the Titans for letting him go, but he looks like now the sort of buy that Chad Townsend was. He's a genuine good halfback, man. Like Chad Townsend was at changing the culture and and um, what when he first went to the Cowboys, establishing like yeah. some calmness around the role. Yeah. Um, because he's not the most talented player, but fuck, his kicking game has improved. Do you think he's sight. got the best kicking game in the comp? Yeah. Him and Cleary, I don't because obviously you can't watch Cleary for the last sort of month. True. But at the moment, I reckon he's the number one kicking game in the comp. I would say in 2020-24, he's kicked the best out of any. When they're player. winning, when they're winning the field position, yeah. he will put you on your 10 meter line in a massive cage kick. Mm. He's so accurate. He's kicking at 50 meters away or 40 meters away. It's ridiculous what he's doing. In His defense is great as well. Good. Really you good. See defender. the size of him. Yeah. He's like a nugget. legs and like, yeah, but like. His, that, was good. His, that was one game that I didn't want to see fucking extra time. And I'm like, oh, you're killing me. Feel sorry for those Ended. The, uh, his kicking game in extra time was the difference. Yeah. Field position. Because Fozzie doesn't have a big kick. No, his little and, pop gun. Yeah, and he doesn't have a big drop kick either. Is there a drop kick? <laughs> Fozzie. That, that was so – then there was no other option. Um, yeah, Jaden Campbell went off. I, I guarantee Jaden Campbell would have been the guy. That, AJ Brimson doesn't strike me as a – he's an erratic player as it is. So I don't think mm. he would have the, the grouse kicking game as well. <laughs> Um, they really lacked in that, and that was the, oh, that was the difference, a, right? Yeah, it's going to be a year like that um, for the Titans. Yeah. Poor buggers. Um, they're going to try their asses off. They're going to get to games like that where it's going to be extra time and then bang. Desi was fu furious after the game with the six against that the Canberra Raiders got. Ricky then followed him after and had a crack back at Desi in the post-match. Uh, Lovely going. Tell yeah. me. So no. basically – So you waited till the fucking depressor as well. I always watch the depressor. Oh, you're yeah. the best. Yeah, but I, I, even though I watch them all the time, it doesn't – like I don't really have to talk about them. That's just a tough carry to watch that game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so Desi was furious with um, – it was a 10 to – no, sorry. Yes, it was a 10 to 1, um, six again. Oh, shit. To so he should be angry. But uh, Rady was uh, Ricky wasn't going to say anything, and then once someone brought it up to Ricky, Ricky said, uh, what, I'll, "I'll get the exact quote. quote give me it. the quote. That's it." And he just oh, goes, really, he goes around in circles about. That All right, yeah. Point. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, that's what's happening. It, it, Obviously, because you can't have hands on the ball. That's very specific rules now. It's not like it was as Ricky's going. It's not like it was in the last five years, or we'll just say ten years ago. Hands on the ball, that sort of shit. Yeah. Get that shit out of there. Otherwise, it's going to be six to go. Yeah. Titans were. Make so, it as fair messy point, as possible. I'm on Ricky's side. Yeah. I think you can, you can find it both ways. Desi was critical that it was so lopsided. He also said that there were a couple that we could add, but they went into that game where they were trying to make it slow and messy and they were trying to well, frustrate where's the Whitey Raiders. from? Yeah, he, he gave credit to Whitey and then yeah, he got the shit. Yeah, having a crack with Whitey. And, and, then, and then the journal. Whitey left, Whitey left Canberra. No, the, no, 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 no. He was complimentary of him. No, I'm just was, joking because Whitey was his yeah, assistant that's his for boy. years. That's yeah. his boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, he's close. And then the, the, the journal went, oh, Desi said this. And he goes, oh, I just said he fucking what? coached. Could he got the shit? <laughs> you couldn't see him get the shit. Oh, I love you, Rick. Uh, what else did I like about that game? I liked the rookie. I liked Chevy Stewart. Yeah. He yeah. returned the ball quickly. Well, who, who blocked the, um, the field goal? Charge down. Yeah. yeah. So him. Did, who so got the mad play to get him the win? The fucking other strange. 18 year old. The two roomies. Oh, what a great what's this just, that's what you want from your young kids like that. Mm. He got he got him a second chance and then you throw the ball to the young kid strange, makes a massive break just to seal the deal. Mm. Fucking love it. 
Ricky uh, has a couple of good youngsters. He's got Xavier Savage, Strange, Chevy Stewart looks all right. We're under 21. Schiller looks fucking good. 21's the average age if you don't if you take Fogarty out. Wow. 21. Is it? Another thing. In the back line? Is yeah, in the back, back line? line. When we were talking about front rows the other day, mm. we forgot about Tabane and, and Bim Papali. Yeah. They're, two, they're the best two – combo. They're, they're a top three combination. Yeah. Easily. Big Papa looked sharp last night. Yeah, Puffs. Looks like he's good. lost a little bit. Yeah, he has. Yeah. He looks good. Puffs has looked good. The one game where they struggled was there's one game where he, they were a little bit off the pace, but apart think, from that. Yeah, well, I think Bill's called him and said, Do you want to come back? Lose a couple. Okay, I like Maybe. that. Maybe. I like looks that. sharp, man. Looks yeah. like he's fucking. He'll be required this yeah, year. Yeah, and he will be because you need that experience. Yep. And he's um he's that he kills origins. Yeah, he's an animal. Tarpany's a weapon. Eh? Tarpany's a player. I love Morgan Hudson Smithies. Young. Hudson Young. They got Smithies. some nice pieces some down in Canberra. In yeah, they got You're some right, man. Huddy Young, he loves it. Zach Hoskins was a bit banged up last night. I think he's going to be. Well, I don't want to put the mic in, but like he's got that sort of build where he's going to get pumped. He's a bit unco, eh? Yeah, yeah. He's fucking head clashes and he yeah. gets hit in the shoulders and he like competes on everything. Yeah, because he competes very hard and he yeah. plays well above his body weight. Yeah. No, he wouldn't be more than 100 kilo, man. 105 no, kilo. No, no. And he's he couldn't take 110. You know, he's rangy. I don't know. But yeah. he, I, I rate him. He was our best player before he got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. I agree. He was having a crack at it. Mm. Um, fuck yeah. I like that Schiller. They got some nice pieces. I like Schiller. He's I like two, Chris. Six, three. I love Timico. Mm. They're they all right. Some fucking players, eh? They're all right. And, and then you put Jordy back there. Put yeah, Ramana back there. And Raps is not even playing. Yeah. So. But the young kid. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure we'll go straight out. But yeah. fuck, yeah, he didn't, he didn't look too bad. Chevy was all right. Jordy Rapp ain't going to I love the way he him. fucking ran, man. Like, that's that's all you want. Just take take it on. 18-year-old kid could have got his head taken off in that he first took hit some up. leaks. He, he took some leaks. He, yeah, they were going he, At least like 10 or 12, he just got the ball and ran straight back at him. And it wasn't like he was running at small bodies. Mm. He was running in between like a Jola for a Haas, you know what I mean? Like, they're big guys. That's their biggest guys. What about the Titans, just before we move off him quickly? Uh, Brimo to six, did you like that? More on ball? It got him into the game more, didn't it? And he looked yeah. even better when he went back to fullback yeah, when Jaden Campbell went off. Yeah, he's a fullback, man. Mm. He's been an out and out fullback for his whole career because he just he's so erratic in what he does, but he knows what he's doing at fullback because he can choose both sides of the field and attack wherever the hell where, attack wherever the hell he wants. Mm. But well, I know Jaden Campbell's a fullback as well. It's yeah. like it's a fucking predicament up there. They need Shitty to predicament. Yeah, I know. They need to make a call there. They need to make a call and maybe potentially look for a half. Yeah. To but how do you play those two guys together? You. Who do you pick? I mean, obviously picking Jaden Campbell as their fullback. Mm. Brimson's just a for. Uh, a player. He just loves playing football. Well, now we're going to Ball see Brimo at fullback. It looks like Jaden Campbell did his knee in that game, yeah, so we're going to see more of Brimo at fullback anyway and then potentially bring back in uh, Tanner yeah. Boyd or that Tom Weaver kid. Let's have a look at this Tom Weaver their kid. Effort, their effort was good. It was, was, really, it was good. really good. Their Everyone resolve, was having a crack. You know, they're having a crack on their line. I mean, something like 50 play the balls in their 20 mm. and they you know, they were struggling to score. So there's, there's probably some really good signs there if you're looking at the video, if you're the Gold Coast, but at the end of the day, you're fucking lost. What about David Fafita, mate? He has, still hasn't uh, exercised that clause yet. Where do, you, where do you reckon David Fafita is playing next year? Is he a Titan Jeez. or not a Titan? It'd be hard. If he wants to win a comp. He ain't going to be a Titans. Mm. And, I mean, he's probably really good friends with Tino. Tino's already won a comp. Mm. Um, he's won Origins. He's won World Cups, all that sort of stuff. You want to win all that stuff before he's, you know, like. Is he the, guy, is he, is he the sort of guy that would have been happy coming off the bench? And he, Even okay. though he had an impact. Would you? Yeah, exactly. If you're him, like, what, why would you like? He's their dude. All yeah. right, I played one or two games off the bench. Now start me. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he's a bench player. I think he just needs to come on and set the tone, and and he needs those instructions before the game. Set the tone, big boy. Mm. Get out there. Get your first. Get your hands on the ball early. Set the tone for all the younger kids to follow you, mate. He was aggressive with his carries. Yeah, he on. but like I don't. Game was nearly already gone when he got on. Yeah, it's yeah. Not gone, but I mean they were in the fight the whole time. But I'm just saying, like you know, like they were they were losing the ruck. Yep. I need him to go at like Papa and all those sort of guys. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'd do if I was him. I'll be looking because he's probably so close with that club. He's been there for three or four years. He loves it. You know what I mean? But what does he do for, for his his growth in the game? You know, he could be a way better player. I'll tell you what I'm not sure on, where the fuck this season is going to go. The football is so hard to pick. We're going to try to do that at the preview on Thursday. Yeah. We'll see you. For round seven preview on Thursday because this rugby league season has been great thus far.